Hey, what's up you guys? My name is Brittany. Welcome back to my channel, Essential Endeavors, where we are finding the essentials together. And in today's reseller hangout, I have my now new friend, Becky. Um, and she has been in my comments for a little while now. We've just been commenting back and forth. Um, and she is a reseller on Poshmark, Mercari, and eBay too. Oh, yep. Okay. Um, and so she's been reselling for a while and we just feel like we have a lot in common. And so we just wanted to hop on here and chat for a while, kind of get to know each other a little bit better. Um, and then just talk about like all things reselling because it's fun and we can all learn something from each other. So um, I will let Becky go ahead and introduce herself for you guys. Yeah. Thanks, Brady. I'm so excited to be here. This is like my first time doing anything like this. So very exciting. <laughs> yeah. So I started reselling so I've kind of always reselled, honestly, like just like my kids' clothes, my personal clothes. Um, probably not till like end of last year, I started um, reselling. Um, but then I would say like in March is when I started taking it more seriously. This year? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah so I'm actually pretty new. Um, and it kind of just like, so I go garage sale shopping all the time. Obviously it's slowed down a lot now with everything going on. Mm -hmm. But um, I think like the first time I realized that I can make money doing this is I went to a garage sale and I bought like two pairs of Toms, like brand new. And I was like, how much are these? She said a dollar. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so yeah, and I sold them each for like 25 bucks on Mercari. And yeah, and I was like, this is like back in like October, November. And I was like, what? Like, oh my God. Like, and then, so I actually got let go from my job in October of last year. And so I kind of was just like, let's just try this and take it full throttle. And um, it's been good ever since. Like every month it was like increase, increasing amounts. And then kind of like in March when everything happened, like I kind of like been plateaued and like some months I'll be good and some months I'll be a little, little lower, but yeah, that's how it's been. It's been a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Learned a lot. <laughs> yeah. So, um, interesting. I didn't know that, that, um, you know, I guess it kind of, everything happens for a reason. I know it's such a cliche, but you know, things work out like you lost your job, but then you also quickly found this other opportunity. And it also says a lot about who you are as a person that you saw that opportunity and you seized it and like you made something of it and take a hold of it. And like what you said, went full throttle with it and you're making so much money too. We kind of talked about it. We kind of talked about like our net profit too. Um, yeah. And I think a lot of that, like, because you have seen so much success is because of like the way that you have designed your business model too, but you primarily source from the bins. And I think that has helped you a lot. How did you, so if you, so you started off with garage sailing, um, yeah. selling, going to garage sales, is that a garage sales, yeah. <laughs> um, and so how did you come across like the bins? Cause that's like your predominant like business model, like where you get all of your. Yeah. Um, actually, so I actually have two like reseller friends that do it. Like my personal friends that do it part-time, but they have full-time jobs. So I'm like, the only one, yeah, that does it like full-time ish part-time. I'm part-time. I don't work full-time hours. <laughs> Um, but yeah, my friend actually, um, introduced me to the bins and we went one day and she's like, yeah, you buy stuff by the pound here. And I was like, what? It's crazy. And when I went with her, I went for like 30 minutes. I didn't go very long and, um, I didn't find anything, but then I went on, like when I wasn't having, when I didn't have a job, I was like, let's go to the bins. And so I went and like, I found so much stuff. Um, and like, I, I kind of told you, so like, I've definitely changed my business model when I go to the bin. So like I used to go to the bins and like only pick up stuff that like I was personally going to sell, like stuff that I was going to post on Poshmark, Mercari, eBay. Mm -hmm. um, but then, so I listened to a lot of podcasts and there's this uh, lady called Vandy's Closet. She sells a lot on ThreadUp. Okay. Um, her name is Melissa, but it, her closet name is at Vandy's Closet and she has a podcast too. Um, so I listened to a lot of her podcasts and she go to, she would go to the bins and buy like 90 pounds at a time and I was like how the heck does she buy 90 pounds at a time because like I would go for like five six hours and like maybe get like 30 pounds right because I was only looking for stuff that like I was personally going to sell in my own closet yeah and so she had mentioned that she buys 90 pounds and she sources for thread up she sources for like buy sell trade stores yeah. and then stuff that she's going to sell herself so I was like let me try that so then I tried that and I feel like it's gone like that completely changed my business model. Like I've, you know, like increased my, my sales amount and stuff. Cause 
I will buy stuff that I'm going to sell to like, even the kids consignment stores. So like uh, once upon a child or kid to kid, yeah. um, kids clothes, like if it's like baby clothes, it weighs nothing. So like, yeah. So, so then, yeah, so I'll search for that. And then I'll search for like Plato's closet as well. Um, and then I'll search for thread up yeah. <laughs> and then I'll source for stuff that uh, I'm going to put in my own personal closet. Right. Okay, cool. So, so just from listening to her podcast, you found out about like thread up and like the other means of, of basically bringing in income. So do you primarily, so you obviously you do kid stuff and you're familiar because you're a mama and, um, and then you also resell women's fashion. Do you do, do you branch into men's at all? Or you're just, you're just women's and kids? I do. I do branch into men's. And like when I kind of, when I first started, I was definitely picking up more men's than I am now. Okay. Uh, yeah, men's does sell, but like I only pick up like Patagonia, mm -hmm. Columbia, PFG, like stuff that I know like my husband likes. Yeah. <laughs> like that that like someone will buy because like I'm not super familiar on, you know, men's fashion. Um, so definitely just like those very known brands. Um, I will pick that up. Okay. Sure. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, I, I mean I guess I kind of started the same way too, just knowing like what me and my husband wear and we both kind of wear the same brands, but obviously I know men's versus women's fashion. Um yeah. and I am in the athletic outdoor world realm. So I knew all those big names and I'm like, wow, this retails for you know, $90, like Merrill hiking boots. We just bought them last summer for a hiking trip. And I'm like, and I'm finding it at a thrift store for $5. Like, yes, please. Yeah. I know I can flip that. Like even, that's what I love so much about reselling is, I mean, cause I view it as a service, right? So you're going out to thrift stores and you're finding like, basically it was like one man's trash is now another man's treasure. Like you've provided a job for somebody to get it in the thrift store to get out for you to sell. Then you're supporting the thrift store and whoever they support. Um, and then you're buying it for a little cost and then giving it to like a wider audience to buy it at a good deal versus a retail price. Cause a lot of people thankfully are becoming more accustomed to that, um, secondhand kind of, you know, wearing secondhand, I should say, um, which is good because, you know, fast fashion isn't the best. Yeah. Have you seen the, um, the documentary, um, the true cost? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's yeah. um, I also saw, we have a subscription to national geographic magazine because we're okay. <laughs> and, um, and it was on the cover, it was like the end of trash. And I had like this huge pile of just like clothes, like purples, reds, blues. And it was just like a mountain of clothing. And there's now like European designers that are um, basically buying out like all this old clothing, um, mm -hmm. especially probably based on material too, but they are recreating new like designer dresses from, uh, they're upcycling material basically. Um, yeah. It's really cool. And then, but then they're also charging like out the, for it <laughs> yeah yeah I have seen I think like Nike too like some of their newer stuff it says like recycled polyester and stuff so like yeah I think that's awesome because I know like I think they said in the documentary that like I don't know like third world countries buy all that stuff in bulk um and mm -hmm. then they just have like mounds of clothes over there and it's like insane it's just like all our waste and it's yeah like, I mean and it goes farther than just clothing too like we just have so much waste period and it's like I'm trying to be mindful of it and I try to be mindful of it too with like packaging and I know some people might frown upon that but I try to recycle all my poly mailers that I get because I do online source like a lot I try to recycle yeah. all of my poly mailers or tissue paper as long as it's in still like good condition um or boxes and I've had some people not be too happy about it like I, I have a <gasps> yeah like in Mercari for the longest time um I had like two or three people give me like a four star or a three star because they're like, oh, it could be packaged better. But I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, it, the item's there and it was great, but like you just didn't like that it wasn't all frilly. And I do enjoy the frilly packages, like they're pretty, but I'm like, why would I go out and spend money on something when I already have it and I can recycle it? And then you could recycle it too. And the, like, yeah. And yeah, maybe I mean, I resellers appreciate it because I know like there's a ton of people that like I'm, I do the same thing. I recycle all like all my Amazon boxes and everything. Yeah. You should see my closet. It's like full of all these boxes <laughs> that I'm waiting for big things to ship. Um, but yeah, I also like I do package some of my stuff in like tissue paper and you know ribbon. But like all that stuff, I got I get from the bins. So like Ooh. I'm like 
Yeah. Like you literally find, like, I found brand new, like big old things of like tissue paper. Oh yeah. Um, we probably yeah. do like after the holiday season too. A lot of people probably donate it. And that's, yeah. that's smart. It's good too. Um, because I wouldn't feel as bad about it. Like I hate go, I mean, it is kind of expensive too, but I do, it is. I do get tissue paper, but if I get tissue paper, I'll reuse that first before I use like the stuff that I got off of Amazon. Um, but that's cool. Like I'm definitely going to keep an eye out for that. I, I try to be realistic with what, when I go out and about, like what people could realistically use other than just clothing. Um, so like hard goods, kitchen goods, whatever is like, I'm like, Oh, like I know that that has a purpose and it could bring somebody joy or can make their life easier. And I found it for this great price and I can then offer it to them at a great price. And I definitely like to pick stuff up like that. Um, yeah. interesting. Um, a lot of people, yeah, I don't know. I guess that, that'd be interesting for people to talk about in the comments too is, you know, do you recycle your shipping supplies? I guess because yeah. some people just I, I frown upon it. I think. I mean, it's not yeah. all curious when you have like a, hooray! I'd be like hooray! Thanks for like reusing and recycling. You know. I know. I was like, maybe I should like leave a note in there, like letting them know that it was recycled, so that they don't like try to get mad at me for it. But yeah, I mean, whatever. Like such is life. So yeah. But anyway, so you are not on YouTube. You are just in the YouTube comments. So obviously you're a reseller, but you're also a viewer of YouTube content. I was going to say comments, but content. <laughs> uh, so how did you start finding, did you find reseller content after you were already in the reselling world? Um, or did you see, find it before, what am I saying? Did you find it before yeah. you were into it? Or did you find it after you were into it and you had like questions? Um. I think like I was reselling and like I had a ton of questions and I think like my biggest obstacle was um, like branding or not branding, but like uh, brand knowledge, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, cause I, I'm, I'm a mom of two, like I don't go out and go shopping for myself, honestly. So it's like, it's hard for me to like keep up with the brands and stuff. So I think like Moki Beth was like one of the first people I like started watching yeah. um, and she's like great like I love her like yeah, she's yeah. also doing like really great in the reselling world. I find like all of like my high-end brands like Suzanne and Eula Johnson, um, shoot a, a few more, I can't name them, Veronica Beard, like I've heard of like all of like those higher-end brands from her because like that's her mm -hmm. role and I totally respect that and um, I try to implement like a little bit of that into my closet but I still try to like broaden and have every sort of item for every sort of like socioeconomic status I guess yeah yeah I I agree on that as well because I know some people you know and everyone wants runs their business differently but some yeah. people like to like curate their closet to like a certain style or whatever and oh, cute. I can't. <laughs> yeah I mean that's yeah that's good and all but like yeah like what if someone I don't know I if I find a good deal on something and I'm excited to post it like I'm gonna buy it even if it's not like my norm thing that I get you know yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that's great. I definitely have stuff in my closet that's like lower end. Um, I was actually just talking to my friend the other day that like, um, I picked up a couple universal thread dresses, oh, yeah. which is like Target brand and like they've both sold. Yeah, like, they're quick sellers. <laughs> which is crazy. It's like a Target brand. Like really? Old Navy. Old Navy always sells like crazy for hotcakes for me. And I, Brilliant. and I know some, I mean, I'm going to try to watch everyone. I don't watch as many of the big resellers that I once did when I first started. And I do mm -hmm. love them and they all have such wonderful knowledge. Um, but I try not to watch them as much anymore. I, I guess I just, whichever ones I need, I guess, cause I'm already so far into my reselling journey. I don't necessarily need a lot of those videos anymore. Yeah. Um, I watch them occasionally now, but I try to, um, watch more of like smaller YouTubers and because I like hearing all those different perspectives because I, I kind of already know, you know, Mogi Beth and like her business model or Nicole state and her business model, um, mm -hmm. or hustle at home mom and her business model. I kind of already know that. And I think everybody has a different perspective and something to share and something to gain from each other. So I like try to consume as much smaller reseller information because it's like, Oh, I haven't heard that before. I haven't heard that perspective or that um, take on that business model. And it, it just allows me to, 
you know, pick and choose for my business, I guess. So yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, I came across you and like, I don't know, I, cause I feel like a lot of the bigger resellers don't disclose a lot of their numbers. Yeah. And I understand that. And I, I totally like, it's a personal decision and yeah. I mean, no hate there. Like I, I support them a hundred percent with however they do their stuff. However, for me, sorry to interrupt you. No, you're good. I, I share everything is because I needed that. Like, and I know I'm like, if I, right. that, I know other people have to need that. You know? Exactly. So that's exactly why I started watching you. Cause I was like, like, just like the logistics and like, just like the small little details. Right. And it's like, mm -hmm. how did you like come up with that? Or like, how did you get that number? Or like, how are you calculating this information? Cause like, I know you have like an accounting background or. Uh, engineering actually. engineering yeah. okay um, yeah so like I'm total opposite like I'm not like that at all so like when I watched your videos it was like great because like I need a play-by-play -play. I need like a step-by-step -step to show me like how to do certain things and yeah a lot of the bigger ones don't do that yeah and I get it because I think they have a higher I don't know maybe they just don't want to I don't know I can't speculate yeah on the reasoning for that but I agree and my my reason for it too is like I want people to feel empowered like to be able to run their own business and to not be intimidated by numbers because that can be intimidating for a lot of people and not mm -hmm. knowing the in like reading in between the lines like yeah a ten thousand dollar a month gross sale number is nice but like you know somebody could have spent nine thousand dollars and really right hundred like after fees and you also don't know like even if somebody made twenty thousand dollars in a month and they only netted ten like half of it um you also don't know like behind the scenes like their what their mortgage is like if they have car um car payments if they have medical bills like you don't maybe they need to make that to even you know you know live paycheck right. to paycheck, so to speak so it's like i, I try not to glamorize numbers like that because it's not realistic i think the idea of reselling and sharing it is to show um the freedom and the flexibility that you could have to help your family bring in money whatever success may be for you or whatever financial freedom may mean to you i feel like anybody can resell and can be successful with it and success does not mean a certain number you know right yeah, I'm actually on my trip to financial freedom. <laughs> Yay! Awesome. Yeah, I'm paying off. I'm actually pretty open about it too on my personal Instagram account. Um, I'm trying to pay 10 grand off my student loans. By oh, yeah. This. yeah. There yeah. are, I mean, student loans are, they can really kick you. Thankfully, I didn't have any, thank goodness, because I'm like, I don't know what I would be. Because right now I feel like, why did I do that? Because now I found something completely different. You know what? That's another thing about college too. I'm sorry. This is completely off topic, but yeah, no, college is so overrated. Like you do not necessarily need a college. It kind of like makes me angry. Cause like, okay, I don't know how your family is or anything, but, um, my family was like, you, you need to go to college, you know, like, but it's like, why? Like it, I don't know. I, yeah, talk about this a lot too, but like, it's really just, I felt like for me, it was for my, my family to be proud of me, right. That I went to college, but then like, they didn't help me. <laughs> like I had zero help. Like I pulled out student loans all on my own and yeah, I got my degree in nutrition and I minored in business Okay. and I'm not, I mean, I guess I'm kind of using my business, but it was a minor. So I think I took like eight courses or something. It wasn't <laughs> like, you know, a ton. So yeah, I, I agree with you too. I think it's very overrated. Um, I'm not planning on like saving money for my kids college. Like I'm going to help them. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm not like building this like huge fund for them to go to college. Yeah, I agree. And I think that's that we are part of a generation. I'm sure you're in your twenties, right? You look like uh, I'm 30. <laughs> really? Oh my gosh. You're yeah. so How old are you? I'm 24. Oh my God. You're so young. <laughs> oh, I, thought, I totally thought we were the same age. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful. Thank you. I just turned 30, like end of July. So yeah, we got a much <laughs> woman over here. <laughs> uh, anyways, and that's also like, whatever, like numbers are numbers. Like who cares about weight? Who cares about age? Like people, right. people and everybody is valid no matter what. That's, uh, I'm like so off topic, but I think everybody should be respected regardless of their age, whether they're very little or very old. I think everybody deserves respect no matter what. But that's a whole different topic. Um, so going back to like college and stuff, I, I think we're a part of a generation where it's like, 
all of our parents were like, you need to go to college, you have to have a college degree to get a good paying job. Um, and while that is true, um, I feel like people don't, I don't know, I guess because like the online sort of the alternative, I think I saw it on the news, like when I was at the gym the other day, they're calling it the the new collar or something like that, which, which is like hmm. the online jobs or, you know, working from home type of jobs, like having the flexibility for things that life is really about. And it's like spending right. time with your loved ones and like traveling or seeing the world or doing the things that you want to do and not being restricted by a certain number and having to work in a job just to be able to pay bills. And like, you actually really hate it. Um, yes. But I'm, you know, they don't, remind you like, hey, trade jobs are really good. Like electricians, plumbers, a lot of people oh, make on them. So much money. One, they make a lot of money, but two, like that is such a good job. You don't have to spend four years in college and it's like a good, valuable skill to have throughout your entire life. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I just think that's so admirable too, but then having online jobs as well is, you know, it shouldn't be like looked down upon because it's like, well, I mean, what do you want me to do? Sit in a cubicle for 40 years just to like retire and maybe go to like, I think they say to, oops, I think they say, um, if you make over like 75 K a year, like you're not any happier after that. Like if you make 200 K, like you're still the same amount of like, is it happiness or like, I don't know, something like that, where it's like at the end of the day, like, money is just a number and yeah. like it doesn't buy happiness for sure and i truly believe yeah. that money no amount of money can make you happy you have to find that within yourself and that is way easier said than done and it takes time and like life is like that and it's you just don't know where you're going to find it but for me like that's one of the reasons why i created my channel too and like that name of essential endeavors has stuck with me for like over a year before i even started my youtube channel because i like considered doing a blog mm -hmm. first um, but really like I, my husband and I have focused on the philosophy of, um, minimalism and finding the essentials, like what is really essential to life and to find what we want out of it and to find happiness. And really it's quite simple. It's spending time together. We married each other for a reason and mm -hmm. getting to travel and like experience life and have adventures. And, um, you know, with the degree path that I picked mechanical engineering, I'm good at it. I'm really good at math and science. I, um, I'm an intelligent woman. I know I am. And I can do anything I set my mind to. Um, and it was a good experience. I did learn a lot from it. Um, right. I worked in the field for like four to six months afterwards. And I'm like, and I drove an hour and a half one way, hour and a half back. And that's three <laughs> hours of my life wasted every day. For what? For money? Yeah. I have my whole life to make money. I'm like, my husband's in the military. He could be gone tomorrow. And I don't know when I'm going to see him next. And that yeah. to me more than a dollar amount ever will, you know? Yeah. So I was like, kind of like after, you know, we, we had conversations and I pursued my master's and I still wasn't really enjoying it, but I did it so I could have the flexibility to teach online. And that's like mm. essential for us is like having that flexibility in our life to do those other things that we want to do because money is a, it's a necessary evil. It's not going to bring you happiness, but you have to have it to live. So yeah. That's like a whole other topic, but um, yeah, I picked that and it's definitely like a good backup plan, but I'm like, I'm thoroughly enjoying reselling because it brings me a sense of fulfillment and joy, like being able to save things from a landfill and like to like personally shop for somebody. Um, yeah. It's just, I just, I have fun with it and I'm um, enjoying it. And then I'm also pursuing YouTube, which I've dreamed about since I was in middle school, since I was like 12. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I always wanted, I don't know why. And I, I kind of repressed that because I was like, the arts and videography and, and photography or stuff like that. I'm like, that doesn't make money. Like you're ingrained to like make money and get a good paying job. Right. College. Yep. You know, you're good at math and science, ready? Like do engineering. And I'm like, okay, cool. That makes sense. You know, I like to learn how things work and why they work. <laughs> so yeah. sure, I'll do that. And I was good at it. I got a good GPA. I was um, in the top of my class. Yeah, I don't, I, I always wanted to do like videography and, and like editing and now I'm doing it. And it's, I'm like on the stepping stones of getting to where I want to go. Like I want to, the dream would be to have a channel of me and my husband getting to travel all over the world and like 
reviews, like Airbnbs, or like our, our, you know, how we road trip around an island and like reviewing it, the best secret spots and like, you know, cool videography to cool music. Like, I, that's a dream, but. <laughs> yeah, eventually one day you'll, you'll get there. That'd be yeah. awesome. So um, the reselling, um, I'm really enjoying because I feel like I'm a teacher at heart too. Um, so I enjoy creating reselling content too. That was a really long explanation as to why I think college is overrated. <laughs> yeah, no, but yeah, I agree too. Like I felt like we were very taught to like do what makes money and it's like, no, like that's not going to make me happy. Like when I was working full time, like I wasn't happy. Yeah. And then I also, I also had like kids at home too. So I was like working full time. My commute was about the same. It was like, oh, it was like an hour there. And then because of traffic, it was like an hour and a half back. So yeah, I'd get home super late and it was just like, why? <laughs> but yeah, like I'm like in the philosophy of teaching my kids, like do what makes you happy, like not what makes you money, you know, like the money will come, um, you know, like luckily we're not like, you know, struggling or like in poverty or anything. So, um, you know, like I, can be there to help my kids and just like support them mentally, you know, and like help them get where they want to go versus like just having them try to like live up to this expectation that like in the end is probably not going to make them happy, you yeah. know? And why would so. you want that? You want your, you want the people that you love to be happy, happy and find their happiness, whatever that may be. And you right. know, you do what makes you happy as long as it's like lawful <laughs> and like legal. <laughs> So I'm, right, not, yeah. <laughs> not, I'm not recommending people do stuff that might not be allowed, <laughs> but um, yeah, I totally agree with that. And I think that that's awesome. And that makes you such a good mom, in my opinion, because like you're Thank already, you. Like, you know, that they're really young too, right? Um, yeah, my daughter, actually my daughter will be eight next month and then my son is two. Okay. Yeah. So you're really building like that foundation of like, you know what, no matter what you do in life, like I support you. I love you. I want you to be happy. So let's yep. roll punches and like, we'll figure it out. So yeah. And, yeah. Okay, Cause you're also leading by example per se, like you, right. You know, you, you're practicing what you preach, I guess. And I think that's really sweet. And I'm sure your kids are going to be able to look back and be like, so appreciative and see how hard you're working for them too so and congratulations on working towards financial freedom like I, we talked about that earlier but um yeah student loans are a pain in the butt and yeah tackle them right now because um extended the like forbearance so like no one is getting any interest on their loans till the end of december 31st so january 1st 2021 because of the pandemic mm -hmm. okay okay well that's good yeah um, yeah, that's good. Yeah, no, they're a pain in the butt. My husband had them when we got married. So I, I married into debt, which I don't care. <laughs> I like it. it doesn't matter. But we yeah. took us probably three, two, two to three years or something like that to pay them off. And like we were, um, you know, set on it. And it was quite a hefty amount and stuff, but it definitely is doable. But like as soon as you do it, like that sense of like, Free. <laughs> yeah yeah no I mean the plan is to pay it off by end of next year so like December 2021 yeah, yeah I think I can do it especially like I don't know with reselling like I just feel like my my brand knowledge is getting like so much better like um I, I also follow a British posher um like I did like this she had like a free week like one week challenge thing. And I learned so much from her, mm -hmm. uh, a British posher. I don't think she's on YouTube, but, um, she has like an email listing and I found her on Instagram. Oh, okay. Um, but you can, you, I think she has a website like a British posher.com and you can sign up for her newsletters and they're free. But yeah, she had like this like week challenge where like she helped you improve your listing, like do something different every day for your listings. And so like you had to make a goal of like how many listings you want to do a day. So I was like, okay, five, like that's realistic for me yeah. at that time. Um, and then, um, so yeah, it was that. And then she like set you up where like, like, I think you do this already too. You're pretty good at your listings, but like the title in your title, you put like the size, the name brand, the, like yeah. the type of item. Yeah. Like the color, if you can, like as much information as you can. And I didn't do that like when I first started. Oh, okay. So I learned a lot from her. So that helped. And then I feel like there, oh, and then there was this other, um, I don't know if like, I mean, it's in her email. So like, I feel like I can tell it, 
but um, she did this, she said this really good tip that I did the other day and I found this Love Shack fancy dress um, at my savers store. And she basically said the way to spend, like if you don't have a lot of time in a thrift store, um, find out what the new color tag is of the week. So whatever color they're putting out like that week and only go through that color. Um, and then obviously that's the newer stuff. So you only go through that color and then you find stuff. And I did that last week and I found a Love Shack fancy dress for like five fifty. Oh my gosh. And I sold it for one twenty five on Mercari the other day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's such a good tip. That is a really good tip because yeah. I, did you have to like ask the front people like what the new color was or is it out and about with Sabres? Uh, yeah, so sometimes I'll ask, but like if I see them like with the rolling racks out, I'll just like look at the like what color is on there. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay, it's orange this week. So then I'll like look, just look through the orange. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, I felt like it, I've only done it once so far, but, um, cause I was like, oh, that's expensive. Cause she's like, I spend like more money, you know, like I pay up a little more, but like, you know, she makes more in the long run. Yeah. And so like me, you know, I'm a bin shopper. So I was like, oh, I don't know if I want to spend like $7 on one item, you know, <laughs> but I was like, let me just try it. And like Love Chef Kansi has been on my bolo list. So I was like, I'm going to buy it. And it was like five fifty. So I was like, yeah, I'll take it. Absolutely. I will. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. That's why, um, I mean, it wasn't on, I don't know. I feel like my bolo list is, I don't know, kind of, I'm not really worried about it anymore. Like I know like what sells really well and I have that brand recognition now because I guess I've watched so many and it's like marinated into my brain. Right. Yeah. <laughs> So, and I guess you have to listen to people's like what solds or like hauls and just hear people talk about stuff. So I don't really keep a bowl like actual physical list anymore. Um, I did way back when and I did it like in alphabetical order. And that's why I did one video like a like list of brands A to Z that were like easy to find. Because yeah, I watched that video. Yeah. <laughs> Because I feel like a lot of people like focus on the bolo and I could never find the bolo unless I was doing retail arbitrage or online sourcing. So I thought that could be helpful. But now, so when I went into the Nordstrom Rack and did retail arbitrage, I found like the gal meets glam and I'm like, oh, I heard people talk about this. And I literally listed it on Poshmark and like 30 seconds later, somebody bought it. I was like, what? I'm like, did I not price this right? I'm like, I did my research. It's like, uh, I, I mean, I was going to start it at a hundred, but I was like, uh, I'm like, but a lot of them were selling in like the 80s and 90s. I'm like, I'll just put 80 on it because I was expecting somebody to offer me way lower. Um, yeah. And yeah, so I just like bought it outright at 80. I guess I probably could have sold it for 100, but it was a quick flip and I made. Yeah, like, I love the quick flips, honestly. Like, I know, so obviously people have different business models, but my business model is like, I'm trying to move inventory. Yeah. So as long as I'm making a decent profit on something, like I will take the offer. Yeah. Yeah. Same. I do the same thing. And I mean, I like to try to move in inventory quick. So if I'm getting an offer and it's mm -hmm. a profit, then I will accept it. Um, but I'm also not afraid of holding on to stuff for a while. Um, I am going to start trying to implement like the buy, sell, trade kind of method. Like I want to kind of revamp my inventory soon. Yeah. I feel the same way. Like now that like my, my brand list has grown more, like I look at stuff that I bought the beginning of the year and I'm like, it doesn't excite me. <laughs> and so I told my husband, I'm like, I kind of want to like get rid of all my inventory, not all my inventory, but like my, maybe my stuff that's like older, like from like summer or like earlier in the year. Mm -hmm. Um, and just like, yeah, just like get new inventory. Cause yeah, I mean like we're constantly learning, like I'm constantly learning new brands yeah. and yeah. And so I just want to have like, I want to be happy with like everything I have in my closet. Yeah, you know? I get that. I respect that. And so what you could do too, like if it's not like super old and you just want to make it turn a decent profit, you could do like reseller bundle lots or something online. Yeah. So I guess, cause, okay. So you're talking about how you want to like change up like your inventory a little bit. Like you want to, um, just kind of be excited about your, yes. items. so I guess it, would that be like a short term goal or what other kind of short term goals would you have for your reselling business and like what's your long term goal or goals yeah. that's a big one I'm sorry <laughs> yeah um short term goals yeah I so at first I was like buy brands that sell right 
Yeah. But then like there's some items that I buy and like they sit there because I'm not excited to post about it. So I think I learned not that long ago, actually, that like I need to get stuff that makes me happy that like I am excited to list regardless of, you know, what anyone says or, yeah. you know. So yeah, definitely just picking up stuff that I am excited to sell. And then long term. So okay, my ultimate goal would be to make like 5k net yeah. a month. Yeah. yeah. Um, like, I mean, you know, I could say more, but like, I think for like me to be comfortable, I'd be like happy with 5k. Yeah. Same. Um, um, so that's like my ultimate goal. I'm like far from that. Maybe like middle of the next year, end of next year, maybe I can be there. I feel like there's just some things I would need to, like, I, I think I, I mentioned this to you too, that I want to like, I think at some point I want to outsource something. Yeah. Um, my business model. How many um, active listings do you have on Poshmark? Mm, that's a good question. Let me look. Yeah, because I think I have like 340 or 350 listings. 392 available listings. Wow. So. Oh, yeah. My goal is also 500. I want to get to 500 active listings. 500? But. Okay. Yeah, I guess we're almost there then. I have, so I started doing, like, tracking my listings. I got a calendar. I just haven't put it on the wall yet. I need my husband. Ooh. But there were many days where I didn't list. So I average, I'm trying, <laughs> I'm trying to average, like, eight a day. Um, but sometimes it doesn't happen. Like, that Sunday, I did, like, 33. I did like 33 that Sunday and then wow did that take you like how long did that take you like four or five hours it took forever today so because I haven't listed in the past few days and there were some days where I didn't I need to do 34 more today to be caught up like for my average of eight a day and I have I have plenty of items like I have a whole rack full of things that need to be pictured and my couch is full of clothes um, it kind of like people always like, oh, Brittany, your pictures are so, or your videos are so polished and it looks so nice. You have your life put together. And I'm like, yeah, but you don't see this nightmare <laughs> going on right now. <laughs> so, yeah. But um, do you find, <laughs> oh, I was going to say, do you, so now that you're like listing more, like you're also selling more, right? So like, how are you like keeping up? Like, cause I feel the same way. Like when I'm like posting a lot, like then I sell like 11 things. So like, I think on Friday. I posted like 10 things or Saturday and then Sunday, like Saturday, through Saturday and Sunday, I sold like 11 things. So I'm like back down, a num you know, like my numbers are down again. So it's like hard to build. Yeah. It takes forever to build. I was like, I'm at like that cusp on eBay too. Cause I have the, I think it's the basic store, like the $21 a month, 21 or 22 bucks a month. And it's like mm -hmm. 350 active free listings or whatever without the insertion fees. But I'm like on the cusp of it. I'm like, they don't have anything from 350. The next one is like 1,000 listings. So it's like a huge, it's wow. like 50 bucks to $60 a month for that store, store subscription. And I'm like, ouch, I don't know. Because you're right, like the more that I list, the more that I sell. So I'm like trying to work up to 500 active listings on everything. But yeah. you know, I'm, okay, cool, I listed 50. So, but there goes 20, 25 out the door the next day. And I'm like, how do people get that many listings? Exactly. I feel the same way. And then I'm like, I thought to myself, I'm like, wait, how did I get to like 300 plus listings that I'm at now? Like, I don't know, like I, you, reselling is such like a high low for me. Like last month I was very like, uh, like not motivated at mm. all. Which is funny because I actually did like my best month last month. And I was like, what? That's crazy. Um, this month, I don't think it's, I'm going to hit higher than what I did last month. But um, yeah, I don't know. It's such a high and low for me. You know, it's such an emotional roller coaster. And it's hard because it's like only me, you know? So like, I have to be the one to like motivate myself. I have to want to be the one to like, be like, okay, like I have to be disciplined, you know? Like it's tough. It's really some tough stuff. Yeah. And so I think that's another reason why I haven't gotten to where, because I told myself by the end of the year, I wanted to get to 500, but like, I, maybe I can, I don't know. I think it'll, it'll just depend, but um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a roller coaster for sure. I, I agree. I can like a hundred percent relate to that because I'm like that up and down. I'm like, like three or four days in a row. I'm like, Oh, all these pictures are done. Listings are done. My videos are posted. I'm on track. Life is great. And then something happens. And then I, 
you know, fall behind with my pictures and fall behind with my listings. And like the last two days, my videos, my, after I exported my videos for YouTube, I was like rewatching on my computer and like halfway through it got corrupt. Like the screen oh, yeah. was white. And I'm like, what the hell? Like what is happening? This has never happened before. And so all that time yeah. I spent fixing it, I should have been listings and like behind, you know, just things like that throw you off. But I think that's just a part of being human, honestly. And and I think it's good to be realistic with yourself because you are just one person. And, you know, a lot of people have those $10,000, $15,000, $20,000 a month months because they're not just one person anymore. They've, they have help, they have help, but they also have to pay for that help. So it's like kind of a catch all kind of thing. It's, you know, yes, you're making more, but your overhead, I guess, or like, yeah, increasing cost or more. Um, and so it's just really depending on how, you know, where you want your business to go. Do you want to be the sole person in charge? Do you want it to be a very small business where like you have somebody come in to your home, maybe someone that you know or whatever, pay them just to help you with pictures or listings or whatever? Because I've considered that, but I don't know if I would ever get to a point of trusting a virtual assistant. I don't know. I just yeah. have a time with that. And it's just I've seen a lot of actually like stories on Instagram of like things not going well. So I'm like, yeah, and, and it's expensive too. Like a VA is like really expensive, I think for like, at least like what I'm looking to pay for. And yeah, it's like someone that's not even like there with you. It's like they're at their home. Like you don't know what they're doing. Like if they're actually doing the work. So yeah, I, yeah, I don't think I could do that either. Yeah. I mean, I think it's a good opportunity, like for somebody if they wanted to get out of reselling, like if for whatever reason, like a few years from now, I'm like totally done with reselling, but I still wanted a flexible job. Like I could totally, I would have a good resume for listing and stuff. And so I could potentially be a virtual assistant for other resellers. And like, you know, the higher ones, people, I'm not higher ones, but people that are more, are bigger and more profitable and it's a bigger business, you know, they're paying the virtual assistants like 20 or 25 bucks an hour. And I'm like, wow, like that's pretty good too. I mean, it's almost comparable to like what yeah. I'm doing right now. Um, also he's actually on YouTube, uh, daily, Re I don't know if it's a daily refinement or just yeah. daily refinement. Okay. Yeah. You know him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I actually listen to a lot of his podcasts as well. And I don't know if he still does it, but he had someone that would just source for him. Mm -hmm. Like he paid someone to just source. So I was like, what? That's awesome. Like, I want that job. Like, yeah. I would love to do that. Maybe like later down the road when I'm like, you know, not wanting to do all the whole logistics of the reselling, but just going out and thrifting and getting paid for it. That'd be like awesome. Yeah, I know. I was like, that's super cool. I, I commented on one of his videos one time just asking like, how, like what his help looked like. And I think mm -hmm. that's right. I think he, at the time he said he had one person that listed for him, somebody that came in and helped with pictures. Um, actually like, and then he had like two or three people that helped source for him. Wow. Yeah, and then him, but I think a lot of his time goes towards like videos and podcasts and stuff. But yeah. sometimes I see him and I'm like, bless his heart. Like he looks exhausted, like all the <laughs> time. And I'm like, I don't know how you do it, but you know, kudos to him. But I know he has like a wife and kids. And so I'm sure he's like living off of caffeine or something. I don't know. That's yeah. just population. But like, I mean, he's killing it. Like he's very successful. And I'm sure that's what he yeah. did. And, he's attained it and I'm sure he's making more goals, um, and stuff too. But, um, I don't know if I would want to get to that level. Like, yeah, I'm not chasing a number, I guess. Like, I, I don't know. Maybe I am, maybe not really. I'm happy with where I'm at and like enjoying the progress and like the growth of it because I really enjoy like the thrifting and hunting and like, even though pictures can be a little no annoying and like listing can be annoying. It's still very fulfilling knowing like, wow, like I did all of this and I am running my whole entire business because of me and I'm awesome. Yeah. I got myself on the back. Oh, <laughs> yay. We're doing great. I know. And I know. And I, we definitely need to give ourselves grace. I feel like, yeah, like we do a lot. Like we do everything. Like, um, I don't think it's like, I'm like, my husband doesn't really help me do anything. I'm like, he's just my motivator. We, we've talked about this. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah he's like, you're doing great. Like, I'm like, Oh my God, I made this sign. He's like, that's awesome. Like, you know, when I get excited, like he's the person here to tell. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. See, my husband, like the most that he'll do is like help me in the post office if I have a lot of boxes, but yeah. other than that, it's not his thing. And that's okay. Like I, I've offered, I'm like, you want to help me? We can grow it 
like make it a bigger business. And he was like, no, oh. I'm like, he's like, that's your thing. You enjoy that. And, and he likes to like build and like work with his hands and stuff. And I would rather him do that anyway, just cause I, I like having our own things too. Like when you're in a marriage, yeah. like you still like you are with someone all the time. Like you build a life together with them. Like you want to be with them. And I do, and we do, but it's also good to have like your own things that you look forward to. Yeah. And like you're definitely, right. definitely, yeah. We're both like ten, like we're working from home, so like we're together, you know, all day. Yeah. <laughs> so it's definitely nice. Like I'm like doing my own thing, and you know, he's working doing his own thing. Yeah, I know some people can be successful with it. Like Rally Roots, I think is it, the big ones, right? Like they're a couple. I don't know. They're like huge. They're huge. Are they on YouTube? Yeah, I saw a few videos like forever ago, but I don't watch them anymore because apparently they work out. But you also never like, you know, videos are just a very small snippet of somebody's life. You really never know right. what's really going on. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't I would never want that, I guess, for us. I mean, my goal with reselling obviously was to find a flexible job that works for our lifestyle. And I found that and I enjoy it. So just the enjoyment alone um, is enough for me, but you know, the money that I make from it goes towards paying off like our home. Cause that's like our goal for financial yeah. freedom is like owning our home and right. we invest in real estate and kind of keep doing that over until we like retire. I don't know. Wait, question. Okay. So I know you said you guys move a lot. So like, do you guys buy a house everywhere you go and just like keep it as an Sometimes. Sometimes. Okay. So we have, this is our second house. We're in our second house that we bought. Okay. Um, our first one is being rented out, um, and then this one um, we are living in right now, and then whenever we do move, we'll have it rented out, but I don't think we're going to want to pay off this one fully like we are with the other one, because the other one's like a really good investment. It was like a lower cost, and like the market is growing, and then here, the rental amount would be good, but it's a more expensive home, and I don't think, it's just not what we would want to own a property with, I guess, so yeah we'll have it for a while to rent it out to have like passive income whenever we right. but whenever the market's good we sell it and like okay we make like 20 or 30 thousand who knows yeah, <laughs> who yeah knows? Well, so we bought our house in 2018 march 2018 and yeah i don't know if i said this already but yeah so like once i pay off my student loans by end of next year then like I want to buy another house, keep this house and rent it. It's a growing city. Like there's so many new um, home like builders here. Um, they're building like, I don't know if you're familiar with like the domain. That's like a, it's like a big shopping mall area, but they're building one here in like Cedar Park, Leander area. Okay. Um, so like Leander is just growing, like even from two years when we bought our house to now, like the value has increased a lot. Yeah. Um, so I definitely like want, want to keep this house and rent it as well. Um, so yeah, I might want to talk to you later about renting. Cause I've never, I don't even know how any of that stuff works. So yeah, it's not bad. It's a little intimidating at first. You just have to be realistic with it. So I, uh, my husband and I keep up with um, a YouTuber. His name's Graham Stefan. He's like really into like the financial world and real estate. He invests in real estate and, um, I've been watching him for like a little over like a year and a half and he had like maybe 500 or 600,000 subscribers when I first started watching him but like he really works towards like building in the algorithm and stuff and now he has like two or three million like subscribers wow but he, he offers a lot of really good information um okay. with like real estate and investing in like stocks if you're into stocks or learning about credit cards and how to make them work for you it's not everybody's cup of tea but yeah. um we knew that credit cards could like work for us but we didn't know like to the extent and i've learned a lot from him so like, we, what do you mean? i don't i don't get what do you mean credit cards work like it doesn't ever i mean i have we have credit cards so i don't i guess i don't know there's certain credit cards um and i'm not a professional this is just yeah. um <laughs> this is just some person talking about it don't take my word for it but yeah. what we do um we have certain credit cards um and we just put like everything everything that we're already going to spend in the month like mm. our our bills, our gas, stuff that we're already going to be spending and we pay it off every month. But by spending on that credit card, you rack up points and we have right. like travel cards. 
Um, and so the points equals to air, like air flight miles. And so we get to travel for free. Um, and like, oh, yeah, I, we do, I do that too. I just didn't know. Yeah. And so you can do that. Um, that's how you can travel for free. Like when you sign up for a lot of credit cards, they'll usually have really good, like, um, uh, like sign on bonuses. Yeah. Like introductory bonuses and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Um, there's a way to work it. It's called like credit card churning. Like you can just like churn like all of like the bonuses and stuff, but it can be a slippery slope depending on the type of person that you are. Um, you know, a lot of people will view credit cards as free money, but they're not. Yeah, no. <laughs> but, uh, definitely not. It's just like saying like, hey, we would be, we would allow you to borrow $3,000 on this card for the month. Um, you can spend it, sure, but you need to pay it off in that month or you owe us like, $50 and then yeah, I actually so yeah one of my credit card and they offered me like a transfer balance and zero interest for like 18 months so I'm doing that with my student loans so like I think mm -hmm. I transferred like six grand on in December to my capital one so okay. I'm paying that every month interest free for like 18 months that's nice so, yeah so that was like actually a big way of me to like get my loans down because like you know I would pay every month and like the interest like I pay like twelve hundred dollars but it only go down like nine hundred because of the interest or whatever so I was like what can I do to like you know make my money actually go towards it so then that's what I did I took like a big chunk and put it to my credit card and so then I've just been paying I pay my credit card and then I have like three more loans on my actual student loans that I pay a month as well mm -hmm. so so yeah, I'm definitely taking advantage of that for sure. But I didn't know that they, maybe for student loans, they do let you with certain student loan cases because with my husband's student loan, they didn't let you use a credit card. Like you had to like. So they wrote me a, so like, it was like a physical check. Like they wrote me a physical check for my credit card yeah. and then I transferred it to my bank account. And then for my bank account, I just paid the X amount to my student loan. Wow. I didn't even know about that loophole. <laughs> That's yeah, good. they offered it. They've offered it to me twice. It's just called a, um, I already forgot what, yeah, just like a, a transfer. I don't yeah. know, but yeah, it was pretty cool. Interesting. Yeah, I didn't even know about that, but I mean, I guess I've, I've, I wouldn't, but that's cool. I mean, people should definitely look yeah. into that, especially if they're in a similar boat. But yeah, you yeah. Have, to have it paid off like really quick, especially not paying any interest on it. Like, yeah, yeah, by the initial year, you can totally do that. That's, a, that's an awesome goal. And like finding that freedom of not having to owe people money is like so fulfilling, like yeah. exciting. And it's definitely something that I feel like a lot of people can relate to and like want to work towards. And I feel like that is one of the reasons why reselling is such a, I don't know what the word is, but people aspire to be resellers because like it's, you know, you make money, but you also get to enjoy it. So you keep getting to work, to work towards your goals, but right. you get Boy, what you do I guess I don't know but yeah. um, so what are like so other than like the flexibility of it and like enjoying thrifting and stuff like what would you say are like the main the few other main reasons I guess why you decided to like stick with reselling and why you love it and why you want to keep doing it yeah um so like you mentioned I do have two kids mm -hmm. um and so I just really enjoy the, the you've mentioned it too like the flexibility like I can stop what I'm doing and like you know take care of my kids or like something happens like you know I'm home like there's no one here which is also like the good thing of it too like I'm my own boss so like I get to pick and choose when I want to work like if I don't want to work today I'm not gonna work like on Sunday I was like I really need to pose but I'm not gonna pose like it's Sunday <laughs> So I didn't, and, and my husband was like, okay, he's like, okay, like, that's fine. I'm like, okay, thanks. Thanks for, like, approving that it's okay. <laughs> um, but then the other thing I really love about reselling is, like, the more work you put in, the more you're going to get out, right? So I've worked in companies where I've worked my butt off, right? And um, it just, it goes unseen or, like, you know, it's, I'm not appreciated. I, I'm a person that needs words of affirmation, so, like, at work I would need someone to tell me like hey like good job like or thank you for doing this um I felt like I would always go the extra mile or like put in so much work like my mom taught me at a young age like you need to work hard like that's you know you have to work hard and so I think that's the beauty of reselling like you know the more work you put in like the more you list the more money you're gonna make which is like really awesome you know like 
um, if you work a salary job, you work, you can work over 40 hours a week, but guess what? You're still going to make the same amount of money. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think that's like really what I really enjoy about it. Like, yeah, I'm working hard and like, sometimes I get frustrated, but then like in a couple of days, like that's going to pay off mm -hmm. and all those sales are going to come in and I'm going to be like, Oh my God, like yeah. my hard work is paying off. Um, so I agree. I think there's, there's going to be pros and cons to any job. Like no matter where you work, whether it's for yourself, if you're working for a company, if you are in the military or you work for the government or you do whatever, there's mm -hmm. going to be pros and cons to everything. So it's like, you just have to accept that and just really kind of figure out, like have like a risk assessment, like what is going to bring you the most happiness and what are the possible risks doing this and just being realistic with yourself knowing because reselling is very um i don't know like it, it's not glamorized or anything well maybe it can be glamorized depending on who you watch and stuff yeah it, it can be a very easy job in certain aspects but if you look at the whole picture it's really it's hard like a lot i mean i guess if i didn't do youtube it would be a little bit easier but I like, I'm putting in like 20 hours a week for reselling and like 20 hours a week for YouTube. So I'm working like a full-time wow. job, I'm only, you know, seeing like part-time hour paycheck. Right. Um, but obviously like YouTube's a time investment um, and it'll pay off in, in the long run. But I'm also just acquiring the skills which are invaluable to me right now too. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, there's so many things that I love about reselling and so many things I dislike about it. Um, but yeah, you what do you dislike about reselling? I'm curious. Huh? Well, I'm, I'm curious what you dislike about reselling. It's just hard. Like part of what you're talking about is like, it's kind of hard to, you know, you are your own boss. So you have to motivate yourself. You have to be excited to get up and go and do it. And just to be disciplined enough to like keep up with a schedule. Um, and yeah, sometimes it's way easier said than done. Um, so I think it just takes a little while to, learn yourself and to learn like your traits and just to like kind of overcome it. I think another hard thing too is like work like I love working from home but I also it's hard at the same time because like the kitchen needs to be cleaned and the bathroom needs to oh be gosh. cleaned. So yeah. Like, That's so funny. I actually just told my husband I was like, "Hey, I'm probably going to go to a coffee shop this week and list cuz I need like a change of scenery." Yeah. Um, and our coffee shops over here are like finally like inside you can go in and sit down. So I was like, "Okay, awesome." Like yeah, it's nice to work from home, but then yeah, it just gets like you need you need a change of scenery every now and then. Yeah, I do, and of course, I love sourcing. Like now that I'm able to actually go out and source, I'm really enjoying it now too. And it's kind of like a, a sense of socialization in a way. Um, but I do enjoy reseller hangouts too because it's like my way of being able to socialize, even though we're not like in person. But it's yeah. like kind of getting it out because we don't have coworkers, and it can get kind of lonely because like. Very lonely. <laughs> have, like my husband doesn't care. He doesn't care. Right. <laughs> he doesn't care about reselling. Like he wants me to be happy, and, he, and he'll listen to like things that excite me. But I know, I know it doesn't make him super excited. So, but that's totally fine. Like that's the point. Like we're not supposed to be the same people. Um, yeah. It is nice to like actually be able to talk about reselling or thrifting and like even when I would be at thrift stores, like even though people weren't resellers there, they would be like wow, isn't this a really good deal? And I'm like, yeah, it sure is. <laughs> and, you know, just kind of talk about, you know, the weather or talk about how Goodwills are like this or the news is like that or, you know, just stuff yeah. that you talk about with people out and about. But maybe that's just me. Maybe I just like... No, I feel I'm a very, like, I've learned in this quarantine that I like to socialize and be around people. Um, yeah. My husband, not so much. Like, he's happy at home. Like, I'm like, no, I want to go out and, like, do something. Yeah. And I'm just that person that, like, my mom is like this, too. Like, we just have to be, like, doing something. Like, we have to keep busy. Like, when we're downstairs watching TV, I'm like, okay, I need to, like, turn on my computer and like share my closet, you know, or like maybe post a few things. Like I can't just sit there and like watch TV, you know? I know. Um, it's hard. But yeah. I feel the same way. Like, I'm like, I was so excited to take so like, Oh my God, I get to talk to like a reseller. Like <laughs> I don't get to do that often. There's not that many, like, I don't think I know anyone here. Like I have two friends that do it, but they're like part-time and they have like full-time jobs. So like, I don't have anyone here that like does what I do. Like, 
you know, just like part-time and like, that's their only source of income, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's really nice to talk to you today. Um, I went to the bins like last week and I, like, I usually don't talk to people when I'm at the bins. I like, I have my headphones on and I'm like in my mode. Yeah. But I, I saw this guy, he had this like blanket that I really wanted. It was like, <laughs> <laughs> I know it was like a it was like a old school like Star Wars themed blanket and we had like the matching sheets at home so this is like just like the blanket and I was like oh. I like sent a picture to my husband he's like that's dope and I was like I'm gonna ask him if he's selling it and so I was like hey like are you selling it and he's like oh yeah like he's like yeah I don't he's like I haven't I haven't looked up because I was like how much and he's like I don't know I haven't looked it up and he's like, why do you want it? And I was like, uh, yeah, like I have the matching set at home or whatever. Um, and he's like, oh, okay. He's like, uh, if you find me something, cause he was into like vintage and like um, sports stuff. He's like, if you find me something, then like I'll trade you for it. And I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah. So like I went and I was like looking, I, I didn't find much. He's like, I, he was like, well, you can just have it. But I was like, no, like I found him like these Dallas Cowboys, like little boy uh, sweatpants. And he's like, I'll take it. So I gave it to him and then he gave me the blanket. And I was like, oh my God, that's like awesome. Like, I was like, I need to do this more often. Like, you know, like there's a lot of guys there that are just there for like teas or like vintage or whatever. And like, which is totally opposite of me. Mm -hmm. So like he, he had even asked me, he's like, what are you, like, what are you shopping for? And I was like, oh, like opposite of you, like women's clothing. <laughs> he's like, oh, okay. Um, but I just thought that was really awesome that he just like, we just traded and he just like gave it to me. And I was like, I need to like do this more often. I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah. I think most people are, are pretty cool and like good about that too. And I, I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of people that are like afraid of, you know, human interaction sometimes because you have this idea that people are going to be mean, but most people are really understanding and like want to help. I, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe I, I want to believe that. So it becomes my reality. Um, yeah. But like, you know, it, it's, it's kind of like that old saying of do one to others as you would like. Done to you. Yourself. What is the saying? <laughs> do unto others as you would want done to you or the golden rule, basically. The golden rule, be nice to people. <laughs> the others the way you want to be treated, basically. Yeah, you learn that in kindergarten and it's like such yeah. a good rule of thumb and so yeah. many people like don't remember that sometimes, but a lot of people do. So I don't yeah. know, even what goes around comes around. So that was sweet. Like that you guys were able to like trade and stuff. Yeah. It's yeah. And it was just like, I was, he was a reseller too. He's like, Oh, like what do you sell on and everything? So I was like, Oh my God, this is cool. Like I, I don't get that often. So yeah. it, was, it was nice. Have you had like first store employees ask you if you're a reseller ever? Mm -hmm. Have you ever told? Mm -hmm. No, actually I haven't. Um, I know like a lot of people talk about like becoming friends with the employees at the like thrift stores you go to normally so they can like tell you I don't know whatever deals are going on but um I so like I go to the bins once a week mm -hmm. and then I go to my local savers on Mondays typically mm -hmm. um when they have their 99 cent sales mm -hmm. um and that's it like I don't really go to Goodwill or I don't go to like multiple thrift stores throughout the week um I have like a very like that schedule so yeah I don't I don't really I haven't had anyone ask me yet hmm. interesting I had somebody ask me before I even knew what reselling was and oh. like, you're a reseller and I'm like uh, I don't know what that is so I'm like, <laughs> they're like oh, okay and then like I went home and looked it up and I'm like oh maybe I am because I was just like looking for stuff to sell online but it just didn't like put I didn't put two and two together and yeah. it's going to be like, I have good stuff in the back. So maybe I should have said yes. Uh, <laughs> or maybe he would have told me to kick rocks. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You never know. I don't know. I, I don't talk to the employees. So I'm like, they could either be really mean or like, they could be really nice. I don't, I haven't had any experience yet. Yeah. So. Interesting. I bet you will now, now that we're talking about it. <laughs> maybe. I know. Right. Oh my goodness. So, so you go to the bins once a week and what are like your main, do you have like any strategies for that? I mean, I guess cause now I've been, so I kind of know what it's like, but yeah, I don't know. Do you have strategies for or like, how do you operate in the bins? Um, so I don't really, so like, you know how they bring new bins out or whatever and everyone waits for them. Yeah. Um, I typically don't go 
to those. Um, I'll go to like the ones like that have nobody. And mo I've seen most people, they just kind of like throw things around and then they're done. Like I will literally like go through almost everything yeah. and I find good stuff. Like there's been multiple times where I walk in and I go to that first bin and I find like Lululemon and I'm like, what? Like, how is this still here? You know, <laughs> like it's crazy. And I think a lot of people that are there like aren't I guess don't know like the brand knowledge maybe that I know so they like I remember one time there was these ladies who were like oh there's nothing there's nothing here and then I go through it and I found like an anthropology romper and I was like, oh. <laughs> like so you know I think um my strategy is just like I've built up my brand knowledge um of course like I know I still have like a ton to learn but um I find like, I find decent stuff now that I have more knowledge on the branding. Yeah. And like I said, I like, if I find like a brand new, like Target piece or like even Walmart with tags, like I will pick it up. I won't sell it myself, but I'll take it to like the buy, sell trade store and sell it there for like a few bucks, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's really my strategy. Just like really going through everything. Um, I yeah, I, I would agree with that because I already do that already, like in a thrift store, because you just never know. Something might look basic, but then you look at it and it's a high end designer because they specialize in, you know, high end basics and stuff. Um, so you just never really know. And I think that was like my biggest, that helped me learn the most when I started research reselling is like when I went to thrift stores and like actually took the time to go through everything, feel stuff. And like, if I felt something that felt like a, mm -hmm. a quality, I would look it up and like kind of get into that rhythm of running comps and knowing what is good to look up and what I knew. Um, and I found so many great pieces just by like, just, I'm like, okay, I'm just going to go. I know I'm going to spend like four hours here. I'm not expecting to get a whole lot. I'm going to learn like what's around mm -hmm. the area, what kind of stuff I can find. Um, and sometimes you just never know, like it's a hit and miss, like you might never find anything at this one place and then you go and then you hit a jackpot. Like you just never know because it's all about people and donating and stuff. So, um, yeah, I would agree. Like, that's what I did when I did go to the bins the first time is I just went through everything, like just yeah. looked at the tags, went through everything. And that's how I found like, well, some of the sweaters, I was like, oh, that's cute. And then I'd be like H and M and I'm like, well, that's still like a good 15 or 20 bucks. Yeah. And um and i kept them more too because i'm like these are going to sell because it's fall right now whereas if i maybe if i found them in the spring maybe i would have just taken them to buy sell trade stores but yeah i don't know is that's that's interesting yeah i don't think there's many strategies that you could really have at the bins Do yeah gloves because i'm pretty sure i'm gonna wear gloves next time it was nasty <laughs> I don't wear gloves um, just cause like, then I can like feel the material, right? Like, oh, this feels like Lulu. Yeah. <laughs> cause like, you know, honestly like Lulu are like, it's so basic. Like I found, I found so many like black leggings or like dark, dark gray hoodies or like, I, yeah, I found like dark gray sweatpants and stuff. And it's really just been from like me feeling. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just take hand sanitizer with me. I have like, I always carry like my little fanny pack. <laughs> I have like, so yeah, like I think the fanny, okay, that's another strategy I have, like take a fanny pack if you go to the bins, because like you don't want to, like I don't like carrying my purse and putting in the basket or anything, so I have my fanny pack, I have my phone, I have hand sanitizer, my keys, and then like my credit card that I'm paying with, Yeah. Um, and that's it, so I just have it all right there. Yeah, that's smart. I have like a backpack purse and then the opening to it is on my back so nobody could like go behind me and open it. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so it's like a traveler friendly um, purse backpack thing. So you're going to go to, so I actually went to the Houston Bins in July. So like for my birthday, we drove to, me and my girlfriend drove to uh, Lake Charles. Oh, cool. And we stopped to the Houston Bins on the way. Um, and I think they have, my friend said they have three well they had two they opened a new one recently and i think she said they're opening another one mm. uh, yeah but we went i don't even remember which one we went to but um have you looked it up at all because when we went um there was like certain times that okay yeah yeah i looked it up on online and it's like 9 30 to a, no it's like 9 to 10 30 and then from 10 30 to 11 30 they like break yeah. to clean i guess 
yeah sanitize or whatever yeah and then like 11 30 when did you guys go um we went in end of july no no like time of day oh uh, we went in the morning so i think that like 11 to 12 30 time frame or something yeah because you only get their increments an hour and a half yeah so, so you, and then i think you could only one person can be in a bin or like look in a bin but like not everyone follows that like there was definitely people like looking through the bin that i was in um it was it was kind of it was smaller than austin's bins i don't know which one you're going to but the one we went to was smaller than austin's it was okay like i don't think i found anything okay there actually I did i found one thing that like was really good but besides that everything else was normal uh it was like a kuji vintage sweater that i found Ooh, okay. I found yeah I, before oh yeah yeah I, yeah have they sold yeah, they sold like super quick. Like the Kuji is um, um, like Australian, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. I found like some men's pants one time. Totally not my style, but it was like this big yeah. koala on the back butt pocket. And I'm like, oh, and then it's just like $3 and it sold for like 50 bucks or something like that the next time. Yeah, so the sweater I had apparently like I posted it on my Instagram and everyone's like, oh my God, like I've never seen that color or whatever. Um, I think I sold it for like two eighty. Yeah, yeah. It didn't go for very much. Like I think that was somebody probably bought it for to resell. I don't know how much it sold. Maybe it was like seventy or eighty. I can't really remember. I think it was in one of my videos. Um, but I did comps on it, and it wasn't selling for very much because it was like kind of weird, like a koala on the butt. Um, yeah, but it did sell for. Hey, I, yeah, that's good. So, so I've heard the more colorful, the better than in Kuji. Yeah, so. interesting, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. It was okay. Like, I, I, I do kind of wish I did wear gloves because there's just some stuff mm -hmm. that was, like, wet and... Stuff. Yeah, there are definitely some wet stuff, and it's like, oh. And I was like, I almost, like, cut my finger on something, and I'm like, um... <laughs> yeah, yeah, you just have to be careful, especially, like, in, like, the home goods section. Like, yeah, there's definitely, like, broken glass and stuff in there. For but I sure. Found, I found a ton of good stuff at the bins and I was excited about it because I definitely want to start implementing that more into my business model, like retail arbitrage and bins and still thrift stores and online sourcing, like a good healthy mix of everything. Um, yeah. So I definitely, I incorporated, um, yeah, buy, sell, trade store. So the other day when I went to go sell some stuff, I was like, let me just look at some things. And I found like two pairs of leggings, like, um, girlfriend collective mm -hmm. and spiritual gangster yeah um they were like 12 bucks each one of them was new with tags oh, wow. um yeah but i had 20 percent off coupon oh, and then okay. i just used my credit from yeah. like what they bought for me so like it was like kind of free i don't know yeah. I, don't, I don't know how you would count that but um but yeah it was like I paid like 10 bucks for each of them and like i mean they sell for like 50 or 60 bucks i've already sold one of them so you made your money yeah, yeah. so which which um buy sell trade stores do you go to the only ones i have out here is plato's closet oh, okay. um, yeah that's it that's yeah that's it there we have two there's one in like cedar park and then there's one in round rock so okay. if i go to the there's a bins in round rock as well um, so if I go to that bins, I will drop stuff off at that Plato's as well. So, and then I try to like, whatever doesn't sell at one location, I'll take to the other to see if they'll buy it. Yeah. I think that's a, that's a good strategy too. I, I've heard that from uh, my friend Chelsea on here that I also did a reseller hangout with. She implements buy, sell, trade a lot into her business model and she'll go to like Plato's and close mentor and a few other ones. I want to go to like Crossroads and Buffalo Exchange. Like I've heard that they're really good. They're usually in like the bigger cities. Houston has some, um, but they're like more eclectic and um, hipstery, modern. I don't know what you want to call it, but I don't know. Yeah. I think that'd be cool. I, you, I guess you just never really know what you're going to find, but I want to try, try and see some of those. And then there's also like a few other smaller like outlet bin things in Houston, like called Family Thrift, and I'm not yeah, gonna so that's what I was gonna tell you about. Um, mm -hmm. Or I'm sure you've seen what's her, make thrift seeds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She goes to that one, and it's like two dollars an item or something. Yeah, she, crazy she cheap. Talked about it. She talked about it a few months ago. Um, 
and because I knew we were moving here, I researched it because she didn't, she didn't say where it was at first. Um, and I was researching just thrift stores in the area and I found something that was like $2 a day, $1 a day, 50 cent day, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Just because I was doing my, my reconnaissance, my research or whatever. And yeah. um, I was like, oh, I bet that's where she goes. And there's like 20 of them. So it's, oh, what? Well, there's like, there's like a, you know how like there's Goodwill and Goodwill bins? It's like yeah. have a family thrift and then a family thrift outlet. There's like, okay. like eight or 10 outlets. So there's like a bunch to pick from. Like, and wow. here, so I guess it'll just be trial. And they all have like the same business model of like $2 and then it goes down from there. Yeah. Wow. That's exciting. Are you going to try to go there too? Yeah, I guess we'll see. I mean, it's a far drive, like first thing in the morning. Like they, a lot of them open at seven o'clock in the morning. So it's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so, crazy. yeah, we'll, really it'll be a far drive, but, but I might try it. I guess you never really know, but, um, yeah. yeah, that's basically what I'm doing with my business model right now. I have a lot of stuff that I still need to work through. I need to try and like hurry and get all this stuff done today. So that way I need to clear out as much as I can to make myself feel a little bit better about going and sourcing later in the week. <laughs> yeah, I feel you. I, yeah, I don't know how big your money pile is. Um, but yeah, I've seen people's and I'm like, how are you still like sourcing? You have so much stuff. Like, yeah, I know. It's not bad. I have my rack full and then I have like maybe 10 more things on, eh, 15 more things on my couch. So, and then my rack has 20. So I have like 35 that I'm probably going to like picture today and get listed. Um, and then I think I have one more like just bin from like old clothing that we picked. That's like my husband and I is that when mm -hmm. we moved, like, you know, mm -hmm. kind of decluttered and it's like, whenever I get around to it kind of been. So it's yeah, immediate stuff. Like <laughs> so, uh, but anyway, so you don't have a YouTube, but no. you do have an Instagram, a reseller Instagram. Do you yeah. want to talk about that a little bit? Like how you started that, why you wanted to start it and um, just kind of stuff that you're doing over there? Yeah. So I was actually really scared to do it um, <laughs> for a long time. And I think I, I just watched like a lot of like YouTubers, so, like Empty Hanger, like they just talk about that they have like a reseller Instagram and how it's like good for your business, like, you know, more exposure and stuff. And so like, I have my own personal like Instagram. And so I was like, I don't know if I want to like use my personal Instagram, you know? Yeah. And so, yeah, so it took me a while. Like I was, I don't know why I was so hesitant. And I feel like everyone that first starts their reseller Instagram says the same thing. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think I was just scared of like people judging me or like, it's a, it's like a business, right? So like anyone can go on my reseller Instagram. Yeah. So it's just like, I don't know. You're just like really putting yourself out there. Um, so I think that's probably why it took me so long. And I think I did it in April. Mm -hmm. is when I first started, uh, when I opened my reseller Instagram and, um, it's been great. Like I've learned so much from other resellers. Like obviously all I follow is like other resellers. Yeah. Um, and there's so much good information out there. Like I've learned so much, like a British posture, like I talked about her, like mm -hmm. I found her on Instagram and she has like such great stuff. There's this other girl recloth collection. She also has an email list. Um, she's from Dallas, like um, she has really good tips as well. Um, there's just so much good and like free information, you know? And so I was like, wow, this is like awesome. Like, why didn't I do this sooner kind of deal, you know? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I really just started it to get more exposure to my account. And then also like, I, I love reselling. Right. So like I wanted to post stuff about reselling and like, I didn't feel comfortable doing it on my personal. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. On my personal Instagram. So then, so then, yeah. So then like, I honestly use my reseller Instagram like way more than I use my personal. <laughs> and like, you know, I post like my, you know, daily like weekend stacks or whatever. Um, and it's just like, it's fun. Cause like everyone that I follow on there follows me, like, you know, we're all like resellers as well. Yeah. I, I mean, I would imagine it's like a, a cool other like knit community over there. And that's like the reason why I did like YouTube. So I, um, my husband and I actually got rid of social media, um, 2016, 2017, like, wow. 2017. yeah, it's like been three to four years. 
Um, and for us, it was the best thing ever. Like, it was just too much. Like, maybe that's something I should do a video about, like, at some point. But um, it was just very destructive, I guess, especially for, like, me and my own. I just got caught up into the comparison game. Um, yeah. Which isn't healthy, like, at all. So I really just needed to get away from it. And by doing so, like, we learned, like, oh, we don't, we don't like it, actually. We don't need it. And that's just us. That's just how we have been able to blossom more in our yeah. relationship. I mean, our marriage, I mean, same thing, but, um, and then just being like better, more present people. Like, I don't know, for like us and our friends, like every time we would get together, everybody would be on their phones and it was right. just like, not genuine or anything. Like it, yeah. like, it is still true to this day. I mean, everybody is just glued to their phones. That and I definitely have to take. I mean, now that my work's on my phone or like the computer, I have to like step away from it, but I'm not like getting caught up with keeping up with the Joneses and stuff. And I feel like YouTube was a different sense of community, or I guess I was going to make it that way, I guess. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But um, I don't know. People were like, well, you should definitely do like, you know, you should do social media to like promote and market. Um, you know, your reselling business and stuff, but I don't, for me, I don't feel the need to. And I'm yeah. also, we just have had like this nice, I don't know, separation of the social media realm. And we just, for us and like our health and mental well being, like 99.9% yeah. .9 sure we'll never go back to it. Well, I'm 100% sure we won't go back to it personally. And I'm right. like 99.2% sure I would never do it for business. Yeah. I know a lot of people are very successful with it, like you are, which is really interesting. And a lot of people are, um, but I don't think you necessarily need it to right. be successful business. And I know that's a fact because I don't have one and I view myself as successful. And I think yeah. we are probably even like on the same page with, with you know, what we're bringing in net every single month and like our time commitments and stuff. So I think it's interesting how, you know, some people implement that and it can make them very successful and some people it doesn't and you don't need it. So I don't know, it's, it's interesting. I don't know, I think it's just the way that the world is now. Yeah, no, I agree with you on the Instagram, does it make me more money? <laughs> or yeah. like, does it make me successful? Um, I actually, I did like an experiment one week on my reseller Instagram and I posted one thing every day Yeah, and it was exhausting, you know, like just like thinking, okay, like what is, what, what am I going to post tomorrow? Like, you know, I have to make my picture look cute. Like there's just so <laughs> much, like, you know, there's just so much expectation on there. Yeah. Um, and while I spent so much time like making a post every day on my Instagram, like my sales suffered, you yeah. know, like, because I was spending so much time on Instagram, it didn't make me more sales. Like what's going to make me more sales is like posting more, you yeah. know? So like, I totally agree with you on that. Um, I feel like I use it more just for like the learning aspect, um, the community, and it can get a little, like very, like you said, very like comparing yourself because like, you know, you see all these people posting like, you know, they're 30 package stacks and like all this stuff. Um, so yeah, it's definitely, it's a little bit of an evil, like, you know, you're just constantly like comparing yourself to these other people on there. I'm sure people do that with YouTube too, but I, I that's what I try to break that barrier with my YouTube videos, like to try to make it like an all inclusive thing, like let's all learn and grow together because I yeah. don't want it to be about me and my success and what I'm doing. Like, let me help you let's all grow together is kind of what I'm yeah. trying to like, have my mission be. Um, and uh -huh. I totally get that. I mean, that was going to be my question for you is like, have you seen, like, you feel like you've gotten more success or like made more money from having like a reseller Instagram or is it purely for the community aspect that you feel from it? Yeah, I think it, I'm leaning more towards just the community aspect. Um, I think if anything, the reason why like I've been more successful is just like my strategies, like, you know, changing, like I mentioned, like, you know, where I'm sourcing or how I'm sourcing or brand knowledge and stuff like that, which I guess is indirectly correlated with Instagram because, mm -hmm. because I do follow like all these resellers that do give out, um, helpful information I have learned and has helped my business. So I guess indirectly it yeah. has. No, that yeah. makes sense. I mean, it makes a lot of sense. I'm sure 
and like all the people that I've learned about reselling from, I'm sure are getting the same information over there that they are on YouTube. So I've just learned it. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I guess, I don't know, is, maybe I'm just not on any typical social media platforms. Is YouTube considered social media now? I'm sure it is because there's like a community. I, I, it's funny. I was going to say, I feel like, I think it's very, I think it's a social media. Yeah. I would say so. It, yeah. It's very different. Uh, yeah. Because it is. I don't know. It can be different. It depends on like the channel that you're watching and like how engaged the um, the person is with their audience. And so I think that's the aspect of like social media that people like. And that's I think I'm trying to bring that into my videos instead of it just right, like the interaction, like the commenting and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Like what I was saying earlier is like I need that social like socialization, and I enjoy. I feel like we all have something to share. And so that's why I enjoy like, hey, like if you have constructive criticism for me, like leave it down below. Like I want to know, like let's talk about it, let's have a discussion. If you do it differently, like let me know and you know, we'll just kind of talk about it. And I think that is like super interesting. Um, yeah. But I know that some channels like just don't do that. Like it's all about, maybe some they think about it like this, but you know, it's not like they're engaged with it like maybe other social media platforms i don't know i guess you probably get to a certain point where you can't reply to everyone and maybe it becomes like a burden or something right i have seen like i know um like mogi beth has turned off her messaging on her instagram and she like let everybody know to like she's just like overwhelmed on like the all the questions or responses she gets so she um turned that off on on instagram yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess I'll see what it's like on YouTube, but I kind i don't ever want to not have comments on there because I do really enjoy the community. Yeah, I think that's great. I like it that like I feel like I'm like in the conversation and I can like talk to you, yeah. you know, via commenting. So that I like that a lot. Yeah, I do too. And maybe it is like now a social media in a way, but I don't feel like it's the same as like an Instagram or a Twitter or Facebook where like you're. It's just a different. I it is. It's like, different. Like when people are on it for their personal accounts or whatever, like it's just a different, it's just a different thing, I guess. But um, yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Um, do you ever think you would ever do a YouTube? I don't know. My husband's like, just do it. And I'm like, <laughs> it's easy for you to say. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you could easily like now, like because most people are on social media, like I feel like it would be an easy transition for you to do that. And I yeah. feel so many people would want to watch you. Like you have such a great personality and like very relatable. And I feel like you could do it. Like if that's something you ever wanted to do. And I feel like there's room for everyone, you know? And I, and yeah, like, I do feel like sometimes there's like, I know you have mentioned this in your past videos that like everyone has their own kind of spin on how, you know, they talk about something, but I sometimes do feel like someone's already made that video. Like, you know, why am I going to make it kind of thing? Yeah. I mean, I feel like that totally like all the time too. I'm like, <sighs> I was like, this has already been done. Like all yeah. and like what souls and like, that's like a, a classic bread and butter video for reselling YouTubers, Yeah, like, you know, but they didn't sell what I sold and they aren't going to tell the story in the way that I would tell a story and like the tips and tricks that I would give. So it's like, I don't know. And I mean, if it's something that you ever like wanted to do, like, do it for yourself before like wanting like an exterior kind of thing for it but yeah i knew that i always wanted to i just never knew how it would fit into our life but then i came across reselling and i became very passionate about it and i do have a different take on it than a lot of other people and especially the fact that i don't have social media like typical social media like mm -hmm. i felt like that narrative was being pushed of you have to have an instagram like or you have to have I mean, I guess I don't really say Twitter, but it was like, you have to be on this and this, like to, you know, make it worthwhile or that's what they would always yeah. talk about. And I'm like, but it's like, I can't like my mental health can't take that. Like I can't do yeah. that. I want it to work. Can I make it work? And I did. And I'm like, okay, well, that tells me that everybody has a valid, like whatever works for them works for them. And, yeah. you know, and other people might want to have 
might want to see that it works for them in a certain way and it works for them in a certain way and that they can pick and choose for whatever they want to do for their life. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I definitely don't think you, yeah, you need Instagram. Like I, even before, like back in April, before I started it, I mean, I was still making good money back then, even before I started it. And yeah, like I just, like I said, it's just indirectly correlated. Like, I don't think because I have Instagram, I'm making more sales. Yeah. So. I, I just think that might be a, a common misconception, but I think, I yeah. think people were wanting to do like a reseller Instagram. I think they would want to do it. Like, I feel like they should want to do it for the community aspect, I guess, right. of it rather than like having the idea like, oh, like I'm going to make more money from doing it. Because I feel yeah. like that might not be the reason why you should do it. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. But that also is just my opinion. Um, but I did, because your Instagram is public, like, um, I, you know, I can just Google it and whatever. It's yeah. Liddy's Lavish Finds, right? Yeah, because, yeah, Liddy's, because my name, my legal name is Lydia, so I just, like, shortened it to, yeah, Liddy's Lavish Finds. Right. It's a tongue twister for me. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'll have a link down below. But I looked at it, and it's so cute, and it's, like, so Thank you. amazing. And I get why people do that, because, like, I also want to like make my pictures for reselling like aesthetically pleasing and I still have like that aspect of like in YouTube videos and so like I like love it and I appreciate it and like I feel like I could be successful with it but I just am choosing not to because I know of how like yeah it's just like destructive for me so yeah I don't I know. Get for sure yeah, that's how this is like not reseller really. I don't even know if people use Snapchat anymore, but um, that's how my husband and I felt about Snapchat. And so like I got rid of Snapchat, like I don't even know how many years ago, but yeah, Snapchat was just like a totally different monster for us and we got rid of it years ago and yeah, I haven't missed it at all. So like I totally feel you on the Instagram thing. Yeah, we had it like forever ago, but we like, we got rid of everything like we were like you know what we're done we have to be done and that was also when we got rid of any we got rid of watching the news <laughs> oh um, rid of watching um any sort of like external stuff like any like where like i think on like the computer it like automatically wants to tell you the news i said oh, yeah this is not happening i'm like i figured out a way to get rid of it and oh, uh, I mean, we've never had cable, but we've had like, Netflix and stuff, but um, yeah. we don't even have Netflix anymore. Like we have occasionally we'll watch like a documentary with Amazon Prime and that's it mm -hmm. once a month. Um, but yeah, like we have just, the more that we've gotten away from it, the more we really enjoy not having like technology like all the time in our life. Um, yeah. But it also, it's, it's really just dependent on how you use it, like as the user, whether you like let it, control you or you just use it as a tool like probably what we do as to make money so it's, it's yeah. definitely you know a good thing and a bad thing at the same time it just really depends on how you use it but it definitely is a way for us to be able to have the flexibility in life that we want and still make the necessary money that we need to be able to mm -hmm. live, enjoy our life at the same time so. yeah I was gonna ask you do you have any good Amazon documentary recommendations oh my gosh oh my gosh you're putting me on the spot let me think are any like good ones because i love watching documentaries um i mean we watch like all of like the planet earth ones because we're really oh, okay <laughs> yeah um, like all the ones like narrated by david attenborough um like we watch all of those because we love the world <laughs> yeah i love it sounds weird because i like it because of the psychology aspect but i'm really into true crime like that oh, okay weird but I like documentaries like that. Um, I can't name any off the top of my head. Well, if you think of any, just email them to me because we have Amazon Prime and like, I feel like I don't utilize it enough. Um, I've watched just that one document, actually I watched two documentaries um, on there, but I feel like there's so many on there. Yeah, there are, there's, there's a ton. It takes a while to sort through. I wish I had a better method of sorting through all of, you know, the videos and movies and stuff, but yeah, I'll have to go back through like my uh, watch history and see like what are good ones. I don't know. What are you interested in? Like what kind of topics? Um, I like educational stuff. So, um, like, well, the true cost was really good. Obviously it's like reseller related. And yeah. then the other one I watched was kind of like dark, but one child nation, Oh yeah, uh, yeah, I saw that for China. Yeah, so stuff like that. 
<laughs> no, it's it's interesting. Like it's not like sad or anything, but it's just like it's intriguing. Like yeah, different cultures. yeah, it's just like crazy to like know that stuff like happened in our world um yeah. so yeah just things like that i'm trying to think um yeah like i love nature stuff too um we have disney plus so like i think on disney plus we have national geographics yeah uh, so we watch some of that stuff too we love disney sometimes like my husband be like hey did you watch this um have you seen shoot what was it it was like princess and the frog um oh yeah i was like i've never seen that like i i thought about it a long time i'm like i don't think i've ever seen it so you know, like i think we had to rent it on amazon it was like three bucks or whatever and we just had a date night and we watched princess and the frog and it was so funny and so cute yeah it's a good movie i love that movie i know so we just we're very simple people now like a lot of people okay. have like old souls but we just are really trying to figure out what we actually need in life and really isn't that much you know it's just yeah the company of your loved ones and figuring out a way to you know do the things that you want to do and be with them and you know so but anyways i think we, we've talked long enough probably for two hours now yeah <laughs> Um, did you have is there anything that you wanted to bring up? Um, I had a couple of questions for you about eBay, actually. Ooh, okay. Um, yeah, so I just started on eBay and like, oh, it's like, it was very confusing at first. Um, but I think I, you said you're in the international shipping program? Yes. So I just recently did that and I just had my first sale. Like I went to the UK and I got delivered and it all went well. Yeah, so some lady, I have this like vintage cat sweater on on my eBay and this lady emailed me. And she's like, hey, do you ship to the UK? If so, like how much would it be? And I was like, oh, I have no idea how to like even do this. Um, and I, try, I think I like watched a video on YouTube and like it showed me like where I can go to like change the settings. But like it wouldn't let me click on international shipping. It was like it was grayed out. So I don't know, like I don't know if you have to like maybe have a certain amount of sales before you can qualify for the international shipping program or like Ooh, i don't know mm, maybe it was like a setting that i had to change i really can't okay. remember now no but you're okay. spot. but like for me when i'm whether you do it online or on your phone you should have an option once you put in the weight and the dimensions It'll show like an international, but if you go all the way to the top, like on your phone, it'll say opt into the global shipping program and okay. be able to just automatically get on it. I didn't think that you would have to meet a certain requirement, but maybe I'll have to like re like relist it and like add that option when I list it or something. Do you do it from your computer or for your or I, uh well oh uh, that's another question I was gonna ask you about that. I do it on Vendu. Oh I yeah, it doesn't have an option on Vendu. You'd have to yeah. You but I've gone to the actual eBay website and like looked at the listing and I couldn't figure it out. Um, so you'll have to go down to the shipping section and okay. should have, I don't know if I can share my screen with you on here. I had like, so eBay's been super slow for me, but I like randomly got like four freaking sales like last night and then to this morning. So I'm like, cool. Um, so I'll just go to like one of my active listings. Okay, these are all auctions. Auctions suck right now. Don't do auctions. Yeah, I'm not even going to try to do that. All mine are just like, buy now. <laughs> uh, I'll just try these. So I'm just going to click here and pretend like I'm editing it. Revise. So I'll just scroll down to um, item. Let's see. Format, price, payment options, and then shipping details. Mm -hmm. If you know, like this international shipping, it should just be a little click box right here. Sell internationally with the global shipping program. Just send it to the U.S. Shipping Center, which is in Kentucky. Um, and then they will like go through it and then do the customs and then send it out to um, the U.K. or wherever it is. Um, yeah, so when I try to click that box, it's grayed out. It wouldn't let me. But I, I don't know if I did it on my phone or my computer. But I can try it again. And I think someone had also mentioned to me to just make a new listing and then add the international shipping. Mm, yeah, you could do that too. Let's see. To sell through the global shipping program, you have to have a seller rating of above standard or higher. So maybe that's what you Okay. Um, yeah, I think I have standard. I don't know. I think I, I just hit like 12 reviews recently. So. Um, yeah, that might be why. Maybe you just haven't been on there long enough. 
Um, yeah, that could be it. So above standard. So really, it's just like for you to get to that point. Let me stop sharing this. So like to get to that point, I think you really just have to sell more, ship it out in the right amount of time, and um, just not have returns. I guess I'm pretty yeah. sure I became above standard within my first month, maybe two oh, wow. months. So. Oh. And then, okay, so then I don't, you know how like listings end, is it 30 days after 30 days? Yeah. So do you um, like relist them before the 30 days hit or do you just let them renew by themselves? I let them renew because okay. it automatically, so like eBay, I don't know if they've changed this because of the managed payment thing, but um, they would initially give you 50 free a month. Um, yep. And then after that, you have to pay them start insertion fee i believe of like 25 cents or a listing fee or whatever they call it mm -hmm. and it makes more sense just to go ahead and get a store subscription because you save yourself so much money especially if you want to like sell if you have like more than 70 items then it's worth having a store subscription um and you huh? get more perks and stuff too let me think yeah so i just let it automatically relist for itself um, and then my, my basic store, I think it's basic. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it says basic source store subscription and it's $21.99 a month. Um, and I get 350 fixed price listings. So basically 350 free, it's not really free. I pay the 22 bucks a month, but you get 350 listings, um, and like 250 auctions if you want to do that. And then you mm -hmm. won't post any insertion fees. Oh, okay. But since I'm like close to that 350 mark, like once I hit 351, then I'll have insertion fees again, like the 25 cents per item or whatever it and is. They charge you the insertion fee when you list or when it sells? List. Oh, okay. So if it gets relisted, then they charge you another fee? If, if you've already used up your 350, yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Um, and then, oh yeah, for... Vendu, how many, what's it, like, what package do you have with them? I currently have the $19.99 a month one, um, the $125, because I, I don't know, I'm like in the middle of the month, I was playing catch up for a long time, so I, like when I was in the move, I had a bunch of drafts, like I was paying every month, so I like saved my 125 drafts for, or it wasn't that much, but it was like seven, oh, okay. um, and then it's just kind of rolled over, but mm -hmm. After this month is up, I'm gonna need to ramp up and do the 251. I think I think it's 30. okay. Yeah, I think it from it goes jumps from 125 to 250. Yeah, I'm gonna, my next renewal, I'm gonna have to go up to that to maintain my listings. And then, do you get any? Do you buy any of like the extra services, like the D list, relist, or? I forget what the other services are. I did it first um, because it was just easier for me to like import all my Mercari stuff because that's where I initially started yeah. and like send it over to Poshmark and eBay. Um, that's really helpful is the importing and deep deporting. That sounds bad. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know what that means, but um, I think it's just the import fe feature. Um, okay. The relist and delist, I believe is like if something sells on eBay and you want to get it off of Poshmark and Mercari really quickly, you can just click right. the list and it'll automatically do it for you. Um, but I didn't find that as an essential in my business. So okay. I just manually do it when something sells. It's not really that hard, but yeah. that's just me. So uh, I had the instance where like something sells on a platform and then I don't take it off immediately and then it sells. And I'm like, uh -huh. One time, it was with a National Geographic magazine, and I felt so bad. And I like it was within like five minutes of each other, and I was like, oh. so crazy. Like, how did that happen? Like, it's happened to me multiple times, and it's completely my fault. Like, yeah. I need to be better at taking things off the other platforms. So, um, yeah, it's happened to me multiple times. So it's that might be good for me to get because I'm apparently not very good at taking them off. <laughs> yeah, that's good because at least it would be one place for you instead of two different places. So that yeah. could be really helpful. And I think they have another feature like you could get all three of the extra add ons for 12 bucks a month. Um, yeah. And uh, the other one is just like all, all of the platforms, which I don't need. Um, I just have the eBay, Mercari, and Poshmark. I don't need to do the Etsy, and I don't need to do it. They now have Depop and Grailed, and I don't. 
I'm not gonna, I thought I was gonna like try them, but I'm like, no, I'm just gonna stick to my three. I might try out Trade Z for like my higher end, like upper, <laughs> uppity kind of brands. <laughs> yeah. And then I also might try out Amazon, but that's a whole different thing. Yeah. Is Trade Z like thread up where like you just send them the items and then they list them for you or? I don't think so. I think you list them yourself. Oh, okay. So it's like Poshmark or something. <laughs> think so okay. that's what I heard um I haven't I should look more into them I'm pretty sure because I heard about them from from Mogi Beth yeah I know she sells them a lot but I'm pretty sure you do it yourself you can sell straight from your closet and post unlimited listings quickly using the website uh yeah okay. so you do it yourself gotcha yeah so but yeah I I've heard from multiple people that it's like the Anything like the middle range and higher does can do well on Trade Z at least. Okay. So we'll see. I haven't gotten into thread up though. I don't know if I will or not. Um, I sell. I don't sell that much on there. Um, it's nice. I get like an extra like 100, 150 a month just on there because I only cash it out once a month. Um, but yeah, it's nice. Like because you find so I find so much like career wear at the bins right and like in really good condition but like that's some like I've tried to sell like Ann Taylor Loft in my closet and it just like doesn't it sits there forever for me yeah and so I send it there and it sells like it's crazy so correct me if I'm wrong the way tra uh, thread up works is like you have get a box you send it all in and like do you keep up with your inventory and like take pictures of it and then once it gets there they do the pictures and then upload it to your account and you can adjust the price. So yeah, you send everything to them. They do all the photographing, all the listing on their website. And then you just have your account so you can see like all your items that they took and that they listed for you. And then, yeah. And then once they go live, you have, I think like 12 hours to change the price. And then after those 12 hours, it goes to bidding, which I don't really understand bidding. And then after those 12 hours, then your item goes live. And then, um, yeah, people can buy them. Um, it just takes a little longer. I think, like, maybe it takes, like, 20 days to get a payout because they have 14 or 15 days to return the item. And then, like, from when they ship the item to. Um, so it just takes a little longer to get the payout. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. And then what's the fee structure? So if something were to, was to sell for, like, $25 on thread up like what is what would you actually be taking from them yeah their fee structure is all over the place like the le the less the price is the more they take so I think if it's like $19.99 and lower they take like 85% or so it's really it's really crazy so like what the Chris Shell, there's this girl I actually bought her course and I took it but um, she like has sold so much on ThreadUp. Like, I don't know, she's like a hundred K I think. And she sends, yeah, she, yeah. I, don't think, I don't think she's on YouTube, but someone did interview her. Oh, I can't remember who it was. Someone interviewed her on YouTube. So she's on, she talks about it on YouTube with someone, but um, she sells like really more high end stuff. So I think it's, if the item, if you list it for over $200, then you get 80% of the profits and then thread up only gets 20%. Oh. So I think like she obviously focuses on the more higher end stuff. Um, but let me actually, I'm on my phone, but like, so like if something sells for like 36 or $37, I'll get like seven or eight or $9, um, which is nice. Cause some of the stuff I send in is like old inventory that I've had from December. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't know what I was thinking <laughs> back when I just started, you know? Yes. Um, and then some stuff that I really just sourced from, from the bins and I'm paying less than a dollar and I'm making like, you know, eight, nine bucks profit. Yeah. So, and all I did was send it into thread up. So um, I'm enjoying it. I'm like not making a ton of money doing it, but. Um, Have they yeah. ever lost anything? That would be my concern. They haven't actually. Um, but a lot of people recommend to like, send like a spreadsheet of what you put in the box and then also keep that spreadsheet with you so then like if they do lose it you could be like this is everything that was in it um I don't do that which I probably should this is what I'm talking about I'm not very organized oh, no. <laughs> yeah. 
that's okay. You could do like a video. I, I feel like I would do a spreadsheet and a video just to like prove that I'm not like lying about something. I don't know. I just, I have a hard time trusting other people. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I'm trying to see, like, I'm trying to, I'm on here right now. So I can tell you like one sale that I made. Okay. So I sold this, um, Isabel and Ingrid, which is the maternity line from Target. Oh yeah. What is sold? The, like, what are the best brands for you that sell on there? Like pretty, like quickly. And Taylor Loft. <laughs> sure. That is like the bread and butter for me there. Okay. Yeah. So Isabel maternity, I got a payout of 408, which isn't much, but I got it from the bins and it sold for 23.99 on there. Okay. So it's almost like, um, like Plato's, you know, like a, buy sell trade store price um but some of them i can get a little more it just depends like this other antelope loft i think my pay was like 11 bucks because they paid like 58 dollars. someone paid 58 dollars for it which is like crazy to me because i'm like what um white house black market does really good on there for me too um a lot of like career brands like i feel like a lot of the like older brands that were like good like popular when we were like younger like michael by michael kors does really yeah. well on there too um what else interesting yeah yeah so it might be a good option like i don't know what's your model for like how oft how long do you keep inventory before you figure out what to do with it i'm like in that stage now of like thinking like maybe i should do something with it because i've just been holding on to stuff um oh, okay. the only thing that i've done is like if I had like a lot of stuff that I sourced online because of the pandemic, I would, and it's stuff that I didn't really want to sell individually. I would take some of my older stuff. It was still good stuff. It was just taking forever. So I take yeah. like five to eight pieces of my older stuff and mix it with some of my newer stuff and sell it as a lot. Okay. Um, I was doing that, but obviously I'm still not making a whole ton. Like I would still probably only make like a dollar or two per piece in profit mm -hmm. um, by doing that if I were to break it down. But I don't know. I might start trying to do that. And I mean, it, it wouldn't hurt. Do they ever turn something down? Like, do they ever turn it away because of the condition? Yeah. So, um, I mean, I, so when you get your list, I mean, or when you get your bag to send stuff, they give you like a list of like things to look out for in the items. And I think as long as you follow that, like they do a pretty good job of accepting. So like most of the time when I send stuff in, I think all my bags have been over 90%. Uh, of acceptance rate so you can pay 10.99 for them to return the items that they don't accept but for me it's just not worth it because all my stuff is like stuff i've had forever or like i've sourced from the bins or bought for like a dollar you know so like to me it's not they don't take like five or six items that's so like five or six bucks i'm like that's fine mm -hmm. um so you can you just pay that extra money if you want your items back that sucks because like I would want to try out some of those older items but then I'd also want to sit and try out some of the more expensive ones too yeah like, I don't think I have to pay to have my items shipped back to me like, I know it it is like that $11 really gets me that's why I never do it and that's why I don't send anything that I'm like gonna be upset if they don't accept you know yeah but a um, lot of people like what you're saying that girl like she sends like $200, $300 items like to sell on there. And like, yeah. that's very nerve wracking to me, like to be like- So that's why she pays that extra $11, right? Cause like, yeah. if they don't accept it, then it's like worth it for her. Cause her items are so high dollar. I know, I just would be afraid like it would get lost conveniently or it would get a yeah. hole in it conveniently. <laughs> yeah, I've have heard people say that like their items came back um like damaged and they like contacted them and they paid them out i've heard their customer service is pretty good um so i just like i said i don't do the return insurance for me it's just not worth the extra 11 dollars mm -hmm. yeah okay interesting that's i didn't know that you did that that was the, that that yeah, was actually i forgot yeah it's actually pretty new i think like so i sent a bag in in march but like it took forever to get processed because they're like really backed up um but then now i do the return assurance so i pay the 16 dollars for like the expedited process mm -hmm. and they literally they get the bag and it's like up within 24 hours it's crazy huh interesting so do you yeah. calculate that into like your profit too like if it you sent like whatever 
16 items, would you just take a dollar off of each one for that um, to like see what your net profit would be from that? So yeah, so I would do, so I, you can send up to 30 pounds. So I like fill it up. It breaks down, but like, I think I can send like 36 to 37 items. So like that divided by 16 plus my dollar cost. I mean, it still comes out to like less than $2 an item. Mm -hmm. So it's still pretty good. And then the good thing too, is the $16 for the expedited process. They just take it out of your, like whatever you make. Mm -hmm. So it just comes out of your sales from them. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. I need to look, I need to look that up a little bit more and I might start trying to do that. I don't know. I think I'm going to try Tradesy for like my higher end stuff to see if, yeah. um, I think I might, because I, at least I'm in control of it. Maybe I have a control problem. Maybe that's my thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I don't know. I feel like a lot of people could relate to that. Um, but a lot of my older stuff, like I think I need to like go through it and like just things that I'm okay with parting with them over there. So yeah. Yeah. I'm a person, I know you like to hold on stuff, but I like, I like having new things. So there's yeah. definitely some items that I do hold on to for longer. Um, but yeah, most of my stuff I like to like have for like 90 days, maybe. Um, there is some stuff that like slips through the cracks and I'm like, like I sold this foot drawer, like this men's like a uh, vest. Mm -hmm. that I've had since like December and like I totally forgot I had it and I mean it sold for like 30 bucks but like I've had it since like December <laughs> and I was like okay not to self not ever picking up this brand again but like I forgot I had it mm -hmm. or else I would have like taken it to like buy sell trade store or something you know yeah so. I usually say like I'm not I don't really buy for this season like I kind of just buy what I feel like is right but now that I'm seeing like a huge like a lot of my fall stuff is selling. I'm like, Oh, I'm like, now I see why they say that because like literally every day it's sweaters and jackets and lightweight jackets and jeans are just flying out my door. And I'm like, okay, that's why they say, you know, prepare for the season. And like when I first got into it last year, you know, I was starting reselling in July, August, September. So I was still buying like summer stuff, not thinking about it. And you know, it wasn't selling in December and it's just now it just sold like this summer. So it was like a year long, but it was just waiting yeah. season. So I'm like, I need to start implementing a little bit more seasonal kind of logic into what I'm doing. But I also, yeah. there are certain things that I'm like, okay, I will buy this year round, but I need to start putting more season logic into what I'm picking up. So I don't have to wait a year. Cause I'm like, I know this is good. Why is it not selling? Yeah. Oh yeah. It's not the right season. So I know there's so much to think about yesterday when I went, I looked in the like bikini section mm -hmm. because I've also heard like when you shop out of season, you find good stuff too. Cause no one's like shopping there, you know? Exactly. So I found like a Trina Turk swimsuit. Ooh. So yeah, I bought it. I was like, okay, like it probably won't sell till next summer. But I mean, like if it was summer now, this, I wouldn't have found it, you know? True. Um, it's just, you know, yeah. Like, yeah, I'm just trying to find that balance in there. Yeah, I guess I probably just need to probably go through the stuff where the season it should have sold and it didn't sell, like kind of things. And I'll probably use my spreadsheet to see, like, if it was like a dollar or less for my cost of goods, like, I might just try out like a thread up thing. I don't know. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think if you're going to try thread up, I would definitely send stuff that you're comfortable, like, getting rid of. Uh, yeah, so I'm like if I make three or four bucks, like cool. <laughs> yeah, um, I do. I'm gonna buy your spreadsheet for next month because oh, I, yeah, you. I haven't bought it yet. But like I, I watched the video and I was like, I need to like get away from the pen and paper because the spreadsheet does like you can put your cost of good right, and then yeah. it'll like subtract everything, and then it'll basically do everything for me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So you just have to. So like what? Because mine's like a three in one. Cause that's just okay. the way my brain works. Like I have my inventory, like it's all one spreadsheet and you can do it with Excel or Google sheets. I only use Google sheets. Now I was using Excel, but I use Google sheets now cause I can use it on my phone. Like if I need to look up an item and see how much my cost of goods was. Um, but I have my inventory, my sales and my expenses. And I haven't really gone into my expenses a lot yet, but you know, like my monthly Vindu, um, you know, what I'm spending for my sourcing gas, like just stuff that I keep up with tape packing, 
I haven't yeah. done a video on it. I feel like it's boring, but some people might find that helpful. No, you definitely should. Cause like this will be like next year will be like my first year doing like taxes for this. So Ew. like, <laughs> I, yeah, I'm going to have to watch your videos and be like, okay, how did she do this? Like, <laughs> how am I supposed to do this? <laughs> oh, I'm like, I want to do like a, a tax video. Like when I do get through it all, but I'm like, I also don't want to be like, you're not a professional. I don't need to take advice from you. So I have a lot of disclaimers, but um, I do, I've always done our taxes, um, like through like TurboTax, not sponsored by them at all or anything, but I just, just yeah. we've always used, and I am like my fam, like me and my husband, like I keep up with all of our numbers throughout the year. I know what we're doing when we moved, how much goes here, how much we paid towards school, okay. the loans, and this. It's funny, I feel like the women are more of the like financial person these days, like my sister does the same, I do it, you do it, my cousin does it for her family as well. Yeah. Um, so I mean, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I just, I like staying on top and I like do our monthly budget and stuff too. And my husband and I like kind of talk about our money every week. So it's not like, you know, it's always a, it's not a, like a bad at the forefront, but we're always being conscious of right. um, what we're spending and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. But going back to the spreadsheet. So I, you know, when I keep up with my sales, so I, this is my process. So I have an item. I take pictures, I get on Vindu, I do my pictures, and at, once I'm done typing my title, I complete, I copy all of it, and I put it over in my spreadsheet, my inventory mm -hmm. spreadsheet, and I paste it. And then I go ahead and put in like the date that I bought it, my cost of goods, and where I posted it. And since I just cross list everything, I just do EPM for eBay, mm -hmm. Sorry. I don't really need to, but like when it sells, I'll go back in and I'll copy it and I'll paste it over into the sales spreadsheet. And then that EPM just turns into wherever it sold on. Like, okay, cool. It sold on Mercari. It sold for 20 bucks. I know that I didn't pay shipping and it's 10% right now. It's going to mm -hmm. about to change, but I would just be like, okay, two bucks is what my selling fee was because that's 10% of $20 or you can just use a calculator um, and I just type it all in zeros for the rest and then it calculates my net profit. Um, I did it like that because I didn't want it to automatically populate the platform fee because I knew it would eventually change and because not everybody uses Mercari, Poshmark or eBay. So yeah. just, if people only use Poshmark and eBay and like Depop, they could just, you know, at the end of the day, you still have to record your own information. Like, yeah, you're going to be able to do that for you. Unfortunately, yeah. I wish I could because it is there sometimes, but I yeah. secretly enjoy it because it's like fulfilling like that last final step of like the process of like, and we're done. We've done our bookkeeping. It's solid. I know I made 25 bucks and I'm right. <laughs> so yep. it's, it's good. And it's, um, awesome. Yeah. I mean, if you have any questions, you know, I'm more than happy to help you too. But I want, okay. you know, I made it to a point where it's like, it's what I actually use and, it what, and it's what makes sense to me. It's very simple. So I'm like, yeah. other people have to like need this and want this and enjoy simplicity like me. Um, and, you know, it just helps you keep up with your numbers on a... Yeah, I think you said you've gotten like really good reviews, right? Like people have said it's like, okay, awesome. Yeah, yeah. I'm really excited about it too. Like it just a lot of them are just like people I had never heard of before too. Like not even, yeah. I had like five or six like people that have specifically said like, I saw your YouTube video and I bought it. I was like, thank you. Um, but okay. if I look at my analytics on Etsy, a lot of them are just people that are searching it on Etsy. Like just randomly. Oh, wow. Some lady that like, sells her stuff at farmers markets that bought it and I was like wow she left me a really sweet message and I'm like thank you Aww. that's awesome so, yeah I'm definitely I that, I feel like that's really gonna help me get more organized with like my numbers and everything so I'm excited I feel like every I'm like slowly implementing like new things every month in my business so it's like becoming like more I don't know just more together <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah it's not just like yeah, all over the place. Yeah, I quickly, because I used to do pen and paper. I did it for like my first sourcing trip. And I'm like, oh no, I can't keep up with it. I just put it. I'm so used, like in the college mindset, if you have like an online PDF, all you have to do is control F or whatever it is for Mac, command F or whatever. And you can type in the word you're looking for. And I'm like yeah. so used to that mentality. I'm like, 
cool. My, if you go through my inventory spreadsheet, I'm like on row 523 because that's yeah. like all of my items. I need to work on getting them. Yeah. I was going to ask, do you inventory your like kid stuff too? Like on the spreadsheet? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, what's your, um, what system do you use? Do you use the bin system or how do you store your inventory? Ooh, yeah, I'm going to do a video on that soon. Um, so I have bins, but I've been okay. categorizing it by like women's size, large plus like anything larger than a large, like sweaters or whatever, like in a bin. Um, and then I'd have like women's extra small, small sweaters and then a men's jeans or something like bins like that, like based on, because it's already built into the category, but now I'm getting to a point where I'm like, I have a lot of sweaters and I don't want to have like three bins of sweaters when like my girls, like the little girls bin is like halfway full. I'm like, maybe I need to figure out how to. So do you do for, so yeah, so my thing, I don't have a ton of kids stuff. So my kit, my kids clothing isn't in bins. It's just like my men's and women's clothes in the bins. So you, and you put your kids clothes in the bins as well, like inventory and everything. Yeah, so I don't have like, cause I know some people will do like um, alphabetize their bins like A, B through Z um, and then they'll just like make a note of it in their inventory spreadsheet, which you can do on my spreadsheet. Like you can just put it in the notes section or right okay. next to wherever your column is, um, which I think I'm gonna implement something like that soon just cause I am growing and I'm like, yeah, I think the categorizing is good when you're smaller um, cause it's easier to find, but now I'm like, I just need the space of all the bins, I guess. I like, I can't have like 10 half empty bins. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. So, um, I'm thinking of like the way that I picture and I list, I think like, I'll just bring a bin in here that's empty and I'll just fill it all up and I'll just like write, I'll take a picture of the number of the bin and when it ends and then the next one will go to the next bin. I don't know. I, I have self Oh, okay. So you're not going to categorize it anymore. Just like whatever you have, you're just going to put in there. Yeah. I think I'm thinking okay. of doing like doing it numerically or alphabetically yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Um, I'll see how that works, but I, I'm, I'm feeling like I need an, an inventory reno. <laughs> So. Yeah, I think, I feel like there's a lot of things I want to do next year, like January, like there's a lot of things I want to redo, you know, it's like the new year, you want to like redo stuff, so yeah, yeah, I feel like I'm going to get like that too. Yeah, I think I'm going to do a video on it here pretty soon, so that'll be fun. You have to stay tuned. <laughs> yeah, I always watch like all your videos, I watch them when I'm like taking photos, when I'm listing, so yeah. They're good. I'm working hard on it. Like it's a lot of work too. And there's just times where I'm like, oh, like my, um, my bins video and then the reseller, not reseller hangout, but the rhyme and reason episode that me and Jessica did yesterday, or we filmed it earlier this weekend, but I just, they, I exported them and then they went corrupt. And I'm like, what is going on? It was like for mm -hmm. our, um, rhyme and reason episode was like the last 15 minutes. I'm like, what? I don't, I don't huh. know but I spent hours trying to get it all fixed and I was very frustrated. Well, you figured it out, right? Cause it's, it yeah, well. I, I figured it out. I mean, that's all listed, but it just time consuming. Yeah. But I am seeing a lot of like, it, I feel like it's picking up. I feel like I'm doing things right. Like, cause I do like the ultimate, I mean, I would like it for it to make me money because yeah. it's at no cost to you. You're going to watch it anyway. Like, Right. You have to watch an extra five or 10 second ad or whatever. And, um, you know, Google ads pay me, you don't pay me. So right. Um, the whole class. Yeah, well, hopefully I'll promote whenever you get the thumbnail for us. And oh, I, yeah. have, I have like a little over 300 or 3000 followers on my Instagram. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I've most majority of them are resellers. So I would think that like, they'd be interested in it. Like I'll make it enticing, you know, like, <laughs> so all the beans, like all our tips and tricks of reselling. Yes, um, yeah. <laughs> so hopefully it'll get you um, some more subscribers. I'm sure it will. Like, yeah. I yeah. hope so. I have one video taking off right now. It's I don't know if it's taking off, but um, my how to take pictures for like eBay, Poshmark, Mercari video. Like I just uh -huh. show people how I did my pictures, like when I was doing my flat lays, and I have like like almost 3000 views on it. And like my wow. videos normally only get like 200 or 300 views. What about your, your bins trip? How many does that one have? 
I just posted that, but that oh. one has like like two or three hundred views on it. Oh, okay. I think Makes that sense. one might do well. I'm trying to yeah. learn the algorithm and like trying to yeah. figure out how to make it happy to like put my videos out to other people and stuff and you know yep. show people what like these are my tips they might help you too so yeah yeah that's the ultimate goal is if i can make youtube like a source of income and you know obviously reselling and then like if i could eventually get to a point where i could just do youtube that would be cool and like do like maybe my reselling youtube and then um an adventure travel one that yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I watched one of your more recent, I think it was your Nordstrom or your retail arbitrage video. That one was cute. Like, I could tell you, like, we're doing different things. Like, yeah. you, ha you have, like, music now. Um, they're getting really good. I feel like you're doing a really good job. I'm trying to make it, I'm trying to do something extra every week, like trying to make it a little bit better every week. Instead of, like, what I've been working on the last few weeks was working on my intro, like, making it, like, a little bit more... It's like my the idea of it um, was like you know with you know an English class like you know how how you have to write a paper and like mm -hmm. the is supposed to um, like bring the reader in like make them want to keep reading and yeah. so I've learned that from I guess research is like maybe in the first like ten seconds of your video like anything that's cool or interesting that will make the person uh, want to keep watching yeah yeah yeah. The longer they watch, the better it does in the algorithm, and it will help me to get monetized quicker. So, yeah. But, awesome. Do you have? Because what is it? Is it a thousand hours of watch watch hours you need? It's a thousand subscribers. Oh, and thousand subscribers. Four thousand watch hours, which is oh. like a weird ratio. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm at like I'm almost to seven hundred subscribers, and then I have like 23 or 2400 watch hours like it's it's finally kind of like catching up to the ratio but for a while it was like okay I was at the halfway point for subscribers but it was like way down for the watch hours I was like shoot I was like it's gonna take longer than I thought yeah um, well yeah I think it'll exponentially you know just like I, I have fun with it like I feel very passionate about it and I like love finding new ideas like to create content for for people so I'm like I think that is gonna help by having that be like my drive and my motivation like enjoying it but also wanting to help people like will help me in the long run I guess too yeah but yeah that's all I have for you guys today thank you Becky so much for coming on we had so sure. much talking about all the reselling stuff and I enjoyed to virtually meet you I guess but um I'll have to I'll have to email you my phone number and we can just text because <laughs> yes, that'd be so much fun please <laughs> make sure to give becky some love i'll leave all of her links in the description below so make sure you go and show her some love and i will catch you in the next one all right bye, bye.